get it on. Wendy Man, girl, you were scandalous and I loved it. Your show is the best, 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 best show on the air. The Wendy Williams Experience. I'm late by, mm, I'll be here in 10 minutes. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. I know this is unprofessional, but it is what it is. Welcome to the Wendy Williams Experience. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great honor and distinction that I introduce to you the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Ooh. Ow. <laughs> yeah. so going on? Hey, you can't believe. I practically just got off the turnpike and into Philly. And, um, am I on the radio? Yeah. Oh, damn. You know, I got my trapper hat on and haven't had a chance to organize my hair underneath. Exactly. How you doing, everybody? What's going on? So, you know, I apologize for being a few moments late. Um, we're going to have a good show, though, nevertheless. I went to a party last night. I wanted to tell you about that. Um, I got some sports news for you today. Um, we're going to talk about you, Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. We're talk about Courtney Love. Um, Rosie Perez, which I have that story. I can give that to you right about now. We can talk more about Janet Jackson and the daughter and Mia Peoples. Yeah, yeah all one and the same, though. The second, all one and the same. Um, also, um, I have a draw, uh, a draw dropping, a draw dropping <laughs> treat for you about a rap mogul and his two women. And Art, yes, is Dwayne Martin gay? Um, I mean, is he gay, or are these pictures just? Making him appear gay that I have in front of me. It's a good question. I've seen those pictures. Oh, you have? Yes, I have. Oh, you saw the series? There are like five of them, right? Yeah, I like the last one, though. It, I got to tell you something. All right, let me get the picture up first of all, because I'm going to give you all the um, the website to go to. Oh, I can't find it right now. Let's move on. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you that website before the show's over. Hey, um, it's Daylight Savings Time weekend, everybody. Don't forget to fix your clocks. You, you flip them forward. Fall, fall back. No, spring ahead and fall back. Yeah, fall back. Yes. So um, I, that happened sometime over the weekend and Halloween, of course, on uh, Monday. Last night I went to the Halloween party for Life and Style magazine, which is like one of my favorite tabs for three reasons. Great articles, great celebrity pictures, and the price is right. Life and Style magazine is like one of the cheaper 
you know, uh, celebrity-driven magazines out there in terms of price, and I just love it. They are they're celebrating their one-year anniversary, and um, everybody was at the party this night. John Cicada performed. He's cute in person. And the drinks were flowing, and, you know, we had a good time. Me and Nicole went there. I left her there. Is she at work today, um, Art? She's here. Okay, good. <laughs> is Goose there, too? Yes, he is. How you doing, Goose? <laughs> doing cool, mommy. <laughs> hey, Goose, the bigger question uh, in the back of my mind as I was racing down the turnpike is, will Art show up, or is he going to prop a pillow in his bed and pull the blanket over and make believe like he's there? <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. He was here making sure yeah. everything's all right. Good. So anyway, um, you know, as it relates to Halloween, um, one of the things at the party last night that I found myself getting jealous, and at one point I couldn't contain my jealousy, and I leaned over to Nicole and I said, "You know, Nicole, I am used to being like the, I'm used to being the tallest woman in most rooms I go in, you know, which is to to my advantage, particularly at parties and whatnot, because because when you're tall, immediately it's who is that? Or what the heck? No. But either way, you're always noticed. At this party last night, there were so many women who looked like me, tall like me, the big hair like me. I mean, they were men dressed as women. It was a costume party. You know, I was the authentic article. But the point is, there were so many Wendy Ru RuPaul-esque type men, women in there. And wow. Wow. Exactly. And I saw some somebody dressed up as Britney Spears. She had the um, the golden ticket T-shirt on that Britney's been photographed in, and you know, with arrow pointing to the stomach and stuff. But I have a picture of Madonna, Madonna's son Rocco, who's the same age as my son, five. Now you know Madonna with her fake British accent and her seemingly <sighs> well, anyway, you know the kids. Um, if to, to punish them, she doesn't read them a story before bed. You know. Like, that's the punishment as opposed to, you know, I'm going to, you know, wear your behind out and taking your TV out of your room, whatever, whatever. Her kids don't watch TV. But the son Rocco is dressed in a policeman's uniform for Halloween and the boy is carrying a gun. Oh. So, you know, you tell me, Madonna, your kids don't watch TV probably because they don't want to, you don't want them to see your former hoary behind and all the hoary stories that are going around about you. Fact. Oh and perhaps a few of them in their fiction. You know, but you're the first one to have your son toting around a gun in the street. Look at, look at Madonna's son. Looks like he's ready to kill somebody. I know people with worse morals than Madonna who still wouldn't let their kids walk around like this. The boy has his finger on the trigger. You don't believe me? Okay. Whose work is this? What tab did I get this out of? The Star Magazine. Just take a look. No TV, but a, the gun is okay. Brooke Shields is pregnant again, everybody. Well, you know what? While the pregnancies have been tearing her up, well, she has the one child, and she um, she didn't bounce back so well. I mean, you know, the, the child, I mean, she looks okay, but, you know, from where Brooke was, she's falling faster than I thought. She's falling faster than Christy Brinkley. Christy Brinkley still looks fabulous. I mean, Brooke, you know, but, uh, her, her daughter's name is Rowan, and um, she's two. And now Brooke is pregnant again, so I, I wish her well. I wish her well. Um, the weekend is here. You know what that means. For me, it means I'll be doing an endless search on MTV for my sweet 16. Yeah. I love that show. And I'll be watching endless HGTV. Oh, by the way, my Sweet 16 was um, renewed on MTV for a third season. Oh. You know, the funny thing is, Art, I don't know whether you're talking to me or not, because I can't hear. The, the connection is absolutely terrible. You know, Power 99 here in Philly, I'm at my Philly radio station today because tonight is the big Jay-Z concert and stuff. Jay-Z and Friends, I don't know who the Friends are. I mean, you know, if there's, if there's any truth to the rumor, they did the same show last night at, you know, um, another power station, but the one in New York, and it was Jay-Z, and it was, um, the lock showed up, the whole, you know, the D-block, whatnot, um, he has a lot of Nas friends. showed up, Puffy showed up, they did All About the Benjamins without dead Biggie or jailed Kim. I have no idea how that turned out. Maybe we'll get that tonight, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just know that I'm here. This is our big show. This is the biggie. This is the biggie. Mm -hmm. Shout out to everybody in Philly. I'm giving away a pair of tickets an hour. 
here in Philly. I know this is Philly news. I probably shouldn't be sharing it with you, but I can share with you how I'm doing the first one. Hey, Marsha, I, I do have a pair of tickets an hour, right? In Philly, Marsha's my goose. Oh. Like, she's on the buttons. It's sisters, we're going to be doing it for our sales today. Marsha, what are we going to order to eat? Can we eat in here? New studios and stuff? Not really? Well, we'll lock the door and break the rules. So, Marsha, do I have a pair of tickets an hour? All right. Well, I'm going to start off this hour with um, let's do it right. I need a bottle of champagne. No. Oh. <laughs> and you can choose your poison. Okay, look, as long as it's cold, it can be Moet Nectar or it can be Cristal. Well, you know what? And, and I got a pair of powerhouse passes. Where do I front row? Do I front row passes? Do I front row passes? I'm going to get you as close to the stage as possible. Who's there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, tonight's a big hip-hop concert. I need somebody to hold me down. All right. You know, once upon a time here in Philadelphia, you know, when powerhouse concerts went down, you know, there was actually a question mark in my mind as to whether or not maybe some of the guests from the bill would actually, you know, come by the show. Because here I am sitting, I could have done the show in New York, you know, and then come down in time for the concert. But alas, I said, you know what, there could be a chance that maybe Jay-Z will come by and then instead of talking about him, which I, pl I plan on doing. What? Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like I said. <laughs> Does everybody hear your cues, or is that no? No, they didn't. They didn't no. hear me that time. Just you. Oh, I said, oh, said two. I said two minutes. minutes. <laughs> okay. Um, what was I saying? I was talking about Jay Z. Yeah, as opposed to talking about him and getting at him. Mm, I got a story for you all. Uh oh. And I'm going to tell you an hour of truth. It's got. I, it's got to be done. But that's also coincidentally the hour that I take my guests. Now I don't intend on him or anybody else coming by, and that's just fine. Just me and Marsha. Sisters, we're going to be doing it for ourselves. Marsha got her highlights going on. She got her flat iron. Who you doing? <laughs> Marsha's getting sex. Look at her boobs all pendulous. I know. <laughs> going on? Yeah, you know this song? I know. I know. When's the last time you saw Marsha? Um, about like almost like six months ago. Yeah, what's different about Marsha? I don't see her enough. Would she lose weight or something? She looks good. She looks very good. With yeah, the, you look with, really good. With, with, the, the, without the, the, with the without the clothes. I've um. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, Abby. I um I got these tickets though, but and I'll give them to you. No questions asked. This is between me and you. But um, I wouldn't mind having a bottle of champagne. And, and about that Jay Z story. Yeah. Well, I mean, Moet Nectar, not Imperial, please, or the Chris. All right, you all. And um, get that man what he wants. Wendy, man. So, Whitney, is there drug use at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. Yeah. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't uh, ask me no questions like I'm a child. Uh, Don't uh, ask me like I'm a child because I'm not a child, Wendy. The Wendy Williams wow. Experience. Wow. Broadcasting live, it's the queen of radio, Wendy. Wendy. Wendy Williams. <clears throat> oh, how you doing? <laughs> Well, everybody, the radio show is uh, the Wendy Williams Experience. I'm glad you guys are here. And so the weekend is here. You know what we already missed? We already missed the Game Show Network, of which... I'm not like a huge watcher of the Game Show Network, but I do have my moments. Like I love um, when they do themes. Like the and we already missed this because both shows aired earlier today. But it was Game Show Network. They did a tribute to Rosa Parks, who of course passed away earlier this week at 92 years old of natural causes. Well, Game Show at Network earlier today aired an episode of To Tell the Truth, which featured. Which featured, um, I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. Marsha, what are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, which featured um, Rosa Parks from 1980. She was a guest on To Tell the Truth. Can you imagine? I, knew, I don't remember her whipping it up and having fun like that, you know? But then she was also um, the answer to a question by Martin Luther King III 
on Jeopardy in 2001. I don't watch Jeopardy at all. But I would have checked out the Game Show Network just to see those two. Eh, oh, well. Passed. Kate Moss is out of rehab. How long do you think it'll take her to get back together with her druggy boyfriend? You know what I mean? It was all good to, you know, kick him to the curb and stuff. Or maybe she meant it this time. Hopefully she did. I mean, they're threatening to take her child away and blah, blah, blah. Her baby's father's giving her hell. You know, her whole career. And, and her career will survive. But, you know, she had a temporary setback because of the drugs and whatnot. But... She um, began re- rehab when everything began to unravel. It seems as though she's only been in rehab for about two weeks, but apparently she's out. And, like, 30 days went by very quickly. This weekend, I also um, want to make it my business to check out Noah's Ark on the Logo channel because now that I've located Logo, I actually have started watching it. And um, Oh, you know what? Shout out to Nicole in the office. Nicole, Nicole, um, I'm going to call you as soon as I close the mic to get the message from you that you were telling me about last night. Um, that that show Noah's Ark though people say it's a really good show. If they say it's um the characters are similar to the ones from Sex and the City. Noah, Kim is giving me the breakdown on her facts. She says Noah is like Carrie, Alex is like Charlotte, Ricky is like Samantha. Do you guys watch the show yet? A lot of you do. You've asked me if I've seen it. And Chance is like Miranda. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out for myself. So Janet Jackson, the daughter, you know, does she, doesn't she? You know what? I believe she has the daughter only because I want to believe the drama, (laughs) the drama of it all. But you know me. Uh, Do I really believe she has a daughter? Yes. Do I want to believe she has a daughter? Yes. Is anybody actually saying she has a daughter? Well, you know what? People are saying, you know, like Young DeBar said, and I remember when, um, Art, what the bars just came on our show? Actually, he just stepped out. Oh, I see. This is why I need a camera in there. Who's in there? Only you, Goose? That's right, Katsu. Oh, no, well, please. You don't know. <laughs> We're the interns. We're here. We're here They're all here. Too. Hey, girls. Hi. Um... Damn, I can't remember which DeBars. Anyway, he said, but, you know, he's under the radar. Janet didn't sue. Young DeBars said on my friend Joan's show, you know, so far Janet hasn't sued. If Janet jumps up and sues, then we're really on to something. We know we ruffled her feathers. And I'm sorry, I don't know that it's enough that Mrs. DeBars is speaking out, the grandmother. You know, they're saying that if she does have the girl, then the girl is like 18 years old. Janet's 39 years old. You know, I can understand, you know, back in the day denying the child and stuff like that, but... Please, your career needs some kind of excitement. You might as well admit it now. Or maybe you just want to drag it out until your next CD comes out. Maybe. But this is what James's mother says. Now, James was the one that was married to Janet. James says, I've always... Wait. James says, I've, um, the mother, rather. I've always believed that. Of course I do. I knew she was pregnant. She was heavy. I have an instinct. I can tell. You see... She's saying, but she's not saying. So what are we saying? Marsha, look at me. I'm using you. So what are we saying? But is she saying it directly? Like like somebody talk direct. Somebody talk direct. Not an artist trying to get his song played. Young, that would be Young DeBars. And not even the one who came to my show, uh, Chico and, and one of the others. Uh, and, and it wasn't um, L. L was ambiguous about admitting it. Chico was direct. My phone's ringing. This is apparently somebody who doesn't understand. Oh, God, I'm sorry, you all. You know what I'm saying? It's somebody who was... I'm sorry. Why would my brother be calling me? Hello? Goodbye? He knows. All my aliases. Wendy Hunter, Wendy Wellington Hunter, Wendy Carrington Wellington Hunter, Wendy Williams. So he knows that we're on the air. Sometimes when my phone rings when I'm on the air, I always figure it's just somebody who knows me by Wendy Wellington. Hello, Mrs. Wellington. The washer and dryer will be delivered at 3 o'clock. You know, something like that. Anyway, what was I saying? All right, so nobody's speaking directly. Mrs. DeBar said that she never had proof that a child was born. She says that Janet, then 18, had never said she was pregnant. She had never seen any evidence of a child. Here's what Mrs. DeBarge goes on to say. It's like accusing somebody of murder when you can't find a body. We don't know for sure. You see what I'm saying? Is she pregnant or is she not? Well, now, what does Nia Peoples have to do with this? I'll tell you what. Watch, I'm going to bring this all the way around. Nia Peoples was on Fame 
when Janet was on fame from 1984 to 1985. Here's Nia's all up in the mix now making her statements. She says, I don't know for sure if Janet was pregnant, but that's what people on the fame set thought when Janet was on the show. When we were shooting that season's finale episode in February slash March of 1985, Janet was looking heavy, wearing overalls in a lot of scenes. I never asked her, but I knew how private Janet was. But I did discuss the possibility of Janet being pregnant with other fame people. Her face was bloated and she'd get tired easily. And again, I can't confirm that she was pregnant, but she sure looked it. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody talk direct at us. Nobody's talking directly. Can, no guts, no glory. No guts, no glory. Well, she goes on to say, well, if this kid Janet allegedly had is now 18, then the baby would have been born in 1987. That doesn't fit what I know because I worked with her on fame in 1984, 1985. Nia pointed out that um, Janet was the one who introduced her to her um, now husband she's divorced from, but Howard Hewitt. So, you know, the plot thickens. Hey, listen, do I have a temporary fax number? Or did you ever get me something here in the 215? It's windy, man. George Bush doesn't care about black people. And you know, George Bush doesn't care about Wendy Williams. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yeah, man, this is Rupi. Wow, wow. Yo, I your boy, be able to Can you hear me? Yo, yo, what's up? This is Kevin Little, and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Everybody, welcome to Advice Hour here on the show. You know, I can't give away um, my second pair of powerhouse passes for Philadelphia until I get the first pair given away. And boy, oh boy, could I use a cold bottle of... All right, Moet Nectar or Cristal? One of the two, please. Unopened and cold, and I got a pair of passes for you for powerhouse. Um, tonight, I'll also be in, um, in Manhattan... I'm going to be hosting a party at Club Amazura. And, um, you know, I got the pictures, Art, of, of uh, Dwayne Martin. Is he gay or what? Ow. I mean, he is, first of all, looks like he's very well hung. He's got a big, one of those big high muscle booties and a pair of thongs on. And I'm trying to look to see whether maybe this is his head put on somebody else's body, which you know how the internet is. Marsha, do you say? Okay, now look at this one. Does that look like him? Oh, yeah. Yes. Does this look like him? Yeah. Art gave me the pictures. It's him, like, in various stages of undress. And, you know, he's got a thong on, and it's just looking crazy. I wonder what Will Smith's got to say about that. How you doing? Oh, Mr. Muscle Man. <laughs> This person says, Wendy, what a week we've had. Cheryl Swoops comes out of the closet and Al you doing goes to jail. What a week. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's advice hour. And listen, just for today, I have a fax um, here in Philly. at 610-784-2075. Some of you have already faxed and I do appreciate that. 610 784 2075 just for today just for today cuz I'm on the road okay dear wendy first off i love the show look i'm a 25 year old black male with a degree and a great job. I'm dating this young lady, and we've been dating for about three months. I've known her for about six years, but never on a relationship level, just as friends, Wendy. So I was thinking of proposing to her in March of 2006. She's everything I've been looking for in a woman, and she's great. We both have no kids, and we connect spiritually. My question to you is, do you think it's too soon to make this kind of commitment? We've both talked about marriage before to one another, and she knows that she will be my wife someday. So we're both on the same page. Thanks for the advice. Signed, Confused. Confused? You've been seeing her for three months. Let me see. Let me count back. If this is October, um, set, um, that's July, August, September, October. July. You know what? What's the deal with March of 06? Can you just wait a full year and then propose to her? 
And the reason that I say wait a full year is because I know you say you've known her for six years, and that's a great start. You've known her as a friend for six years, and you've been romantically involved for three years. But you have to wait for some of the initial lusty lust part of the romance to wear off to really know whether, you know, not only can you be great friends with her, but you can keep the romance together and you can be on the same page. Marriage is a whole lot different than being friends. And, and although friendship is a good start and marriage is a whole lot different than, you know, being in the throes of passion of, you know, three month romance. And I, I admire your, your, um, you know, your focus on what you want out of life. He's 25. He's got his degree and a great job. Can you wait until the summer of 2006? Okay, good. And then don't be engaged for any more than a year. I mean, if you've known her for all this time and, you know. Okay, good luck. Hey, girl. And my best to Miss Audie and the gang. <laughs> Wendy, I have a great job. And a fiance who works for the NYPD. My job is prom has promoted me and I will be moving to Philly next year. Oh, look, Philly. And we're also getting married next year. My problem is, is that I feel bad about having to uproot my fiancé from his job and his close-knit family. He and I have, be, have been into our careers for about four years, and I have more potential of making six digits than he does due to my Master's of Science degree and my ambition. His family is great, and since my grandmother died a few weeks ago, my family is not as close. My career, however... Um, is not conducive for me to be the kind of mother that I hope to be one day. And it makes problems if I were to move again. I made the move for a boyfriend in the past and I regretted it. He left me three months after the move. This is another relationship, everybody. Three months after the move, he knocked another chick up a year later and then they got married and they focused on each other. Ha, 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 big mistake. They're not together anymore. Wendy, if I must move and uproot him... He's going to do it. He's going to sacrifice his uh, career and all the conveniences of being around his own family. If I stay, I have to take a pay cut. And Wendy, I have to start from scratch again. But at least I'll be close to his family and what is left of mine. And I have a better opportunity of family life. That's the family life I've always wanted. I'm like you, Wendy. I love hard and I hate even harder. <laughs> yes, exactly. I have great advice for other people. But when it comes to my own life, I'm a wreck. Please help. Well... If you're going to be working in Philly, nothing's to say you have to live, live deep in Philly or deep into New Jersey. You can always live in Woodbridge and work in Philly. And Woodbridge, New Jersey is like the in-between point. Now, I have no idea what the New York City stipulations are on being a cop. Do you have to live in one of the five boroughs? I'm sure you can't live in New Jersey or Philly and be a New York cop. Um, is he opposed to being a, a Philadelphia police officer? Here's the whole thing. There's too much emphasis on his family, his family, his family. You've not mentioned how old either of you are, but he might not be ready to get married if he's so drawn to his family like that and and you're so drawn to his family for him. You know, when you all get married, this is your fiancé. You haven't mentioned that you have any kids and, and you mentioned that you want to be in a family way and family means a lot to you, but if you moved to Philadelphia, it wouldn't be the same because you wouldn't be around his family. But guess what? You'd be moving with your fiancé, which I'm hoping that you guys will be married within the year of, of from the time you made this fax up. He's going to be your family, and you're going to have children with him, and that's going to be your family. Not that family right there that raised him or your family that raised you. I mean, that becomes extended family. Do you, do you, do you know what I mean? And... um Life is not without risks. I wish you well in Philadelphia. I mean, he's, I mean you should be lucky or be, be happy. He's willing to move for you. He's, he also recognizes that you guys have more potential to grab life's golden brass ring if you follow your job than if he follows his deadbeat job. I'm not saying it's deadbeat. Shout out to all the cops. That was a little cop joke. But boom, boom. Ow, don't get angry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I wish you well. I say all that to say, please help. I say all that to say, welcome to Philadelphia, where you can check out the Wendy Williams experience on Power 99. It'll be just like being back at home where you listen on WBLS. Do you know what I mean? Instead of your husband being, a, your fiance soon to be husband being an angry NYPD, he'll be an angry Philly PD. Anger is anger with the cops. When he comes home, puts that gun down, boy. 
Oh, that's a terrible stereotype of cops. But you guys realize you got that stereotype going on with a lot of women, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, Mr. Man, Mr. Man. It's a great little one-night stand jump-off costume. And you know, Mr. Man, he's a cop. Protect me. But the reality of it mm, makes some women just cringe and shiver. I mean, you know, to have that all the time, all that anger. Hey. What, what, kind of, what kind of time do I have? Oh, I can? Well, I can barely hear you, so why would I take phone calls? Okay, let's try. Okay. Hello? Hi, hi, Wendy. How are you? Oh, perfect! Oh, we can take phone calls. I am not alone. <laughs> you are here with me. How are you? I'm fine. I had a Good. Comment. Well, welcome to the radio. What's going on? It's advice hour. Yeah, I had a comment, and I wanted some advice. First, okay. my comment was... Um, about Nia Peoples, when you mentioned her name, I knew exactly what she was going to say. Mm. I remember clearing the sitting in my girlfriend's kitchen, getting high, watching fame. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> she was doing backflips. Sitting there, just going on. We were like, what is going on? Wow. She was clearly, clearly pregnant. That's okay, as saying. much as I love this yeah, conversation. I don't know, but she was definitely pregnant. But this is advice hour. Yeah, I told you I have some advice, too. Okay. Okay, go ahead. My advice is very sad. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right. Um, I have not been in a relationship for ten and a half years. Oh, crap. I, um, I had my daughter uh, with someone I had been with for six years. We were not together but at the time that I had her. I always thought the relationship would get back together. Didn't He's a good father. There's no problem there or anything like that. Um, basically, I've always had a fear of things like molestation and things like that. And I decided, well, if I'm not going to um, be with my daughter's father, I'm going to just live my life alone until she's like 18 and I don't have to worry about having a man around. And she could fight somebody off. Right. Okay, wow. she's nine now. What's the and deal with molestation? Was was that is that part of your background? Uh, I was molested by a cousin when I was between eight and ten. Gotcha. You know what right. I would do? You 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 need therapy. Because I, I went to therapy, but that's not even my problem. I know I need oh. therapy for that. Okay. <laughs> and that's why I decided that I wanted to try to date. Right. Yeah. Okay, that was a year ago. Wendy, I'm not bad looking. I can't find a man. I can't no. find someone to say hello. I mean, I think it's because of my job, where I work. I'm like so far from where I but live. But there's got to be something. Then. You've got to be wearing a signal. But you've got to be wearing some sort of signal or something that's... I mean, <laughs> you, you said you haven't had a relationship in 10 years, but the last time you had sex... I haven't sex, had a date. I haven't had anything. How, when's the last time you had sex with a man? In 2000, with an ex-boyfriend on a business trip. <laughs> Cobweb coochie. <laughs> um, listen, it's more than your job. You're throwing out all the wrong signals. Don't buy into we, these women talking about there's a man shortage, there's a man shortage, there's no good <laughs> black man, the there's internet. no good man. Mm -mm. There's something wrong with you, something woman. Wrong with me, huh? Yeah, this, yeah. The answer lies within. You need more therapy. <laughs> here, because here comes another weekend. We are upon another weekend, and you be well, sitting you know, there you, by you yourself. So it's like I have to spend my spare time with my daughter. So I understand. Can I even fit one in? But besides even getting to the point where I could send them in. Where can I even get one to approach me? One step at a time. Listen, you got to learn how to juggle everything. You got to work. You know, you need a little TLC from, uh, you know, uh, uh, some warm, strong arms also. And while I admire your, your ability to, you know, focus solely on your daughter, that's an excuse. So you don't have to get out there. What did you gain a bunch of weight? Yeah, over the years yeah. I have. But, you know, I even got over there. I'm like, you know. I'm not all cute and tight anymore, but I'm like, you know what? That's not, how old are you? I love big girls, too. And I'm like, 
I'm How old I'm are you? Really, I mean, I know I'm decent looking. I'm very How old are you? People are, and I'm tall. I'm tall like you. And that's, you know. How old are you? How old are you? <laughs> are, what's wrong with my phone line? How old are you? I'm 37. 37. That's a lot of excuse. Let me speak to one of you. Yeah. Say, hey, you, know, you better, like, you you better get you high. some before that dries up. <laughs> No, you know what? Um, it sounds like a lot of excuses that you're making. I say get out that? there. Take a long assessment in the mirror and get out there and have yourself some fun. Wendy, man. My brother, he's 28 years old, has four children by four different women. But this heifer called my mother yesterday. She's like, he got my sister pregnant. I want the money back for the abortion. The heifer showed up at my house with a receipt. I fell out. The Wendy Williams Experience. Yes, everybody. So the telephone lines apparently still work. Do I have that correct, every uh, Goose and Art? All right, so 866-GET-WENDY. You still dial the regular number, everybody. And we're still in the throes of passion for advice hour. Listen, yesterday, um, as I was leaving, I started a sex survey that I told you I was going to complete today during advice hour. You know, on the Tyra Banks show today, she's talking about sex. Um, She's talking about actually trisexuals. Well, one thing that you need to know about Tyra, in case you didn't, is that, oh, she is, well, in true model fashion. uh, mm, mm, Oh, half how you do it, sir. All raw. Oh, please. As if I'm shocking you. As if I'm shocking you. (laughs) All right. Well, listen. Jane Magazine did a survey about sex across the country. Women of all colors and and backgrounds. Uh, They they interviewed about 4,000 women. And they published the report in the new issue of Jane Magazine. And one thing that was found is that women think about sex almost as much as men. 54% of women say that they want it every day and 15% can't get it that often. Hmm. Oh, did I mention these were 20-somethings? Okay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> the vast majority of the participants, they say, are single women between 20 and 29 years old. Years old. Well, this is Jane Magazine. It's that demographic. 2% of the women surveyed said that they were virgins. 2%. And um, it also showed that uh, 51% of these women like quiet sex. They don't want all the screaming and hoopla and whatnot. And when they hear music, they like it to be something, you know, nice and jazzy like Nora Jones. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, one in five said that they would have sex for money. And yeah, well, one in five uh, women between 20 and 29. So how many how many of them interns are in there, Art? <laughs> you got you know, two. Shaylena right. Asia's here. Mm-hmm. And there's three other ones where in the other room? Yeah. Sh- oh, Shakira's here, too. There's a hole in the house. And 36% admit to cheating on their partners. 28% of these women said that they've had a threesome. <laughs> and the stats um, also show that 34% of the women tell their friends all about the good stuff dealing with sex. Isn't that just like a less mature woman? See, so you want to let her, you got to learn to keep your mouth shut. But that's okay. Thirty. I can't believe that's very high. 34% of you all between 20 and 29 out of the survey talk like that to your friends. And listen to this. It gets worse. 8% of you all give the play-by-play details to your friends. And you wonder why your man is now boinking your best friend. And by the way, I still subscribe to those who talk about it all the time aren't getting it anyway. And if it was really that good, you wouldn't be talking about it. <clears throat> if it was really that good and you really cared, that is. I mean, I remember it being that good and not caring, you know, back in, you know, your kid. Wendy, I'm going to be here for a minute because Art is passed out in the office. <laughs> <laughs> passed out from what? I can't see. Shh. What? He's sleeping? Nah, it's no, not a great no. goose pop, man. <laughs> What's going on? He's, he's drinking like a fish? Yep, a lot of great goose jumping off. <laughs> Hey, Art's been, this is the third day in a row Art had drinks. Maybe he has a problem. I just didn't want to say nothing for a minute. <laughs> Do you think Art has a problem? Sadly, that he's very happy. 
You think he's on the verge of having a problem? On the verge, yeah. I saw this with somebody else. I ain't gonna say no names. Years ago. Do, do I know the person? Yeah, you know him very well. I ain't gonna say no names, though. Wow. Wow. You know, I, know, I know signs when I see them. Well, you didn't recognize I was getting high back when I was. <laughs> That's did because you? I was too young and inexperienced to to, to Well, you to don't see know it. signs because I was real obvious. Are you kidding me? Drippy I was naive nose, then. I was young. Forehead, I was young and naive then. I'm, I got Same more wisdom from now. The day before. I was young and naive. I got more wisdom now. <laughs> Hard, burnt up fingertips from the lighter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Crack belly. So I was the perfect intern because I didn't see none of it. Stupid. I don't trust you. Hey, Goose, let me talk to a man of maturity. No, believe me. Goose? Yes, hon. Does Art need an intervention? Mm, no, I, I, I don't think so. Okay, see, sit down. It's just Friday. Exactly. Every day with, is like Friday with him. Exa- exactly, <laughs> but there was six years for yesterday and Wednesday. That's not a sign. Oh, I know. He's celebrating because I'm going to live. Ah, so there you go. He's still celebrating. Dear Wendy, congratulations on your great medical results. I'm writing for advice because I have an uncomfortable situation. I'm 29 years old and I have a two-year-old son with my ex-husband. I left him when my son was only one month old because he was sleeping with my ex. Excuse me, with his ex and everybody else. I hated the mistress at the time, Wendy, for pursuing him, ruining our marriage, and making me a single struggling mother. I didn't sign up for that. He obviously was the one to blame, Wendy. But of course, I'm going to hate on the mistress because that's what some women do well we've been separated slash divorced for two years now wendy his family blamed him and continued to be close with me well one day i found out that they were all over the mistress's house having dinner betrayed again wendy i hate being the victim and i wanted to be mature for my son and i didn't want to let the situation hurt me again so i called the mistress and i told her that it's gone on long enough and that i would like to make amends and she would be my son's stepmother one day if they ever got married and if she were to have children with my ex then they would be siblings well she invited us over and we talked all night she met my son for the first time and i felt free wendy free finally because i would never be hurt again by the mention of her name i would never be betrayed again because she was now in my life too my ex-husband is still a cheater and cheated on me with cheated on her with me quite a few times in the past during revenge sex after i met her i didn't want any part of the triangle anymore so i haven't been having sex with my ex and i recently saw that he had a personals ad on match.com well i cut the ad out and sent it to the mistress well wendy She's still with him, and she just asked him to take the ad off Match.com. My question to you, Wendy, is do you think it's possible to be civil with the mistress? That's one question. The second question is, would you? Yes, I do think it's possible, and I don't know that I I don't know that I could. I can give you several examples where um, civility with the mistress paid off. Ivana Trump was introduced to Marla Maples, that tramp, by Kathy Lee Gifford. And um, Ivana Trump ended up divorcing Donald. He had a baby with Marla Maples. He's no longer with Marla Maples. I mean, you know what? Um, Yes, I think it's possible because I've seen it done. Brenda Ritchie, too. Brenda fought Diane, then they ended up being friends. So, you know, um, yes, I think it's possible. Would you... uh, Let's not even think that far down the road. I told you I love, I love hard. I hate, I hate harder. <laughs> I'm not as mature sometimes as the answers I give. <laughs> it's windy, man. I got slayed so well. Made me do things I don't even do to my husband. Oh, oh my God. God. It's windy, will you? It's windy. The greatest show on earth. Wendy Williams experience. decide what to wear for tonight's um, concert that I'm going to. And so, you know what I said? I said, I'm going to wear an outfit that takes me through the entire day from sitting crumpled up in the car, coming to Philly, to sitting for, you know, doing the show, and then over to the Wachovia Center for Jay-Z and Friends, and then back up the Turnpike, where somewhere around 11 o'clock or midnight, I'd be at Club Amazuro. I said, what is a good, almost 24-hour outfit? And I said, jeans. Well, yeah, just in case, you know, you run a pantyhoe 
or something like that. You know, one leg. They look all messed up. And I want to wear heels, but I want them to be comfortable. These boots that I have on are incredible. Incredibly comfortable, and they're suede beige um, with with rabbit embellishment, and they're I, my jeans tucked in because I've lost over seven. Or I've lost seventeen pounds on LA weight loss. The I used to have muffin calf. I couldn't even get the the boots zipped up, but now there's enough room where I can actually tuck my jeans in and not roll them up at the top because that's part of that cheating. You know, when there's not enough room to, to tuck them in, and you'd roll them. Yeah, I'm one of those too. This particular pair of boots I can actually tuck. And um and I have on a, a gold belt with some rhinestones on it, and I got on my big trapper hat, and I got on my long Steve Lindsay hat hair. You know what hat hair is? Hat hair is the hair that you wear when you only have a hat. Well, I mean when you have a hat on. That's it. It's not hair that you wear without a hat because it's very very long. Goose, you saw me fashioning it yesterday, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Trev Hollywood, are you in there? Yes, I am. Is Art still laying on the couch? Yeah, he is passed out crazy. Oh, gosh. Anyway, Goose, I got my hat hair on, and I just came back from the bathroom. There were so many hair strands in my booty crack. The hair is long. It's like it's like 25 <laughs> inches long. No, it's showgirl hair. When I go on the stage at the Wachovia Center, you know, it'll be a good silhouette. But that's it. I, I'm wearing jeans, I say all that to say. Are you still fussing, oh. or are you comfortable? No, I'm fussing. That's why it's hat hair. <laughs> you know? I don't understand how Naomi and some of those girls wear hair this long with no hat. Like, like you know, because it's just, I've spent so much time going, you know. Anyway, um, dear Wendy, this is from Mia. She says, what web address for the pictures of Dwayne Martin? I don't know the web address. Art does, Mia, but as you know, Art's not talking. He's sleeping. Well, he just tried to IM me something, and he just spelled Hennessy, H-E-E-H-E-S-E-Y. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best time to wake him up and bring him in the studio. Let's talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> Shane, you know? go get him. Okay, exactly. So, Nas's protege, Quan. Do people know Quan? I know Quan's name. Marsha, do people know who Quan is? So they don't care that um, that the cops showed up at the hotel when they smelled weed at the door and knocked on the door and Quan opened it up and let him in. And that's when the cops found a gun in the refrigerator loaded with bullets. Nobody cares. OK, then nobody cares. Dear Wendy, I just want to say that the dates from fame where Janet was on in 84, 85 makes sense. So the girl that's Janet's daughter is like 20 or 21 years old. Young DeBar says she's around 20 or 21 years. I don't even care. I, in my mind, I believe that Janet had the baby. In my mind, I believe that, that it's just par for the course with the remainder of the weirdness for the Jacksons. For whatever reason, she's chosen to hide this little girl. For whatever reason. I, you know, we got bigger fish to fry. How about Beyonce and the baby? And how about Free and the baby? Okay, hold on. Let me bring it all back around. Now, I'm saying alleged first. And I'm sorry it's got to go down like this, Philly. I know you're going to go see your man Hova tonight. But let me just say, I did not time this story for this particular date. Turn off the music, Goose. Remember I told you I'm not going to believe Beyonce's pregnant until I believe she's pregnant? I believe she's pregnant. And I believe Free is pregnant, too. And Free, I believe Free will deliver before Beyonce. Wow. wow. I also believe wow. that BET fired um, AJ first. They were going to hold on. to. They fired... Age, wait, excuse me. They fired Free first because Free wouldn't. 86. She was like, uh, uh, I'm 37, honey, and this is Hovey, baby. I'm having, you know, this is my golden ticket. <laughs> Check the move. She allegedly, of course, was pregnant, allegedly, before Beyonce. Wow. Beyonce decided to play a little catch up despite alleged paperwork, you know, in her various contracts and stuff saying, you know, you can't have a baby, you can't have a baby. She's like, F that. This is supposed to be my man and he's going to have the jump off baby before mine? Yeah. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. This is all alleged and I'm only saying that just, you know, for you all's entertainment. Let's go to the phone. Oh, I mean, we don't have to. We can just let it. We can just sit and think about that for a moment. As a matter of fact, I don't want to go to the phone. Turn off all the music. Let's just let's just think about that for a moment. Free is paid. 
sure we'll judge her. But we judge him more, right? But Beyonce immediately, you know, like no more condom, allegedly. Let me, where's my pen? Let me stick up. Let me make sure this goes down. And then Beyonce allegedly is pregnant as well. Let that, hold on, hold on. Let, let, that, let that stew for just a moment. Wow. Now, you know Free, I'm sure, is paid to like stay in the cut and so on and so forth. He's not losing Beyonce. He's not losing that. Not at the hands of some jump off mess. We will turn on him like a wild dog. We will turn on him. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. Um, right? I mean, I could be wrong. Will we turn on him for jumping off with her and getting her and getting this girl pregnant? Does it does it soften the blow a bit if Beyonce is pregnant at the same time? It doesn't just make him look like a big sloppy camel. Yeah. <laughs> I remember I had that dream. <laughs> he pulled his pants down at the Laugh Factory, and the tip of his Richard looked like his lips. Like, <laughs> I told you all about that. He pulled, he pulled his pants down at the Laugh Factory in my dream. I don't know what he was doing on stage. Maybe in my dream he was saying, you know, when I hate your ass. You know what I mean? I don't know. I was sitting off to the side and I couldn't see it, but but <laughs> somehow I did see. And the tip looked like this. You know how you know how the camel big camel blue. Yeah. Hmm. All right, let's go to the phone. Let's go to the phone. I mean say what? Hello? Yes, hello. And it would make sense, the reason that Free hasn't been showing up. Why is it that she's been in all these men? She was just in Smooth Magazine or King doing the banging layout. 37 or no 37, she's got it going on. Okay? But your insides still say 37. Tick, tick, tick. I'm pregnant. What? I'm not about to. Oh, hell to the gnaw. And the golden ticket, too? <laughs> Hello? Hello. Huh? And that's, and you know, why is she just dropped out of sight? I have named at least four things since 106 and Park has ended where she was allegedly offered but not accepted. You can't tell me that 37 years old, she wants to go full steam ahead and be in this rap thing even though she put a hot verse down on the remix. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, it's Wendy. I'm sorry. Hi. How you Hi, doing, lady? Hi, Wendy. Hi. What's going on, Wendy? Oh, boy. Um, you know, I mean, we're just sitting here talking about uh, Jay-Z and Free and Beyonce and the, all the possibilities. Yes. I hear that. Okay, you have a nice weekend. Bye. Goose. Hey. Yeah. Really? You don't hear anything? Hey. Yes, put somebody else on. Hello? Okay, hey. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hey, hello? <laughs> Hi, I mean, you're on the radio. Hello? Hey, you're on the radio. Yeah. Hello? I just can't deal with yes, this. Wendy? Yes. Oh, uh, I'm listening to you talk about free, and that is a mess. Yeah. I can't agree, and we will turn on him. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Okay, love, love your show. Okay, thank you for calling. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hello. Hi. Uh, you're on the radio. Hello. Goose, just keep it, just keep it moving. Hello. Yes, hello. How you doing, Wendy? Uh, hi, how are you? All right. I was coming about the um, the Jay-Z and Free thing. Okay. Um, yeah, it's kind of sloppy, but you know what? Um, mm. Different strokes for different folks. Some, some may, Maybe he saw something that he liked. He just couldn't get enough of. Beyonce is all that, but you know, Free is uh, 37. She's gotten a little more experience, a whole decade. Wow. Three cheers wow. for the older woman. Somewhere wow. in his twisted wow. comment, he just wow. bigged up a woman of a certain age. Hey, you know, I can't, can't I know. I'm there's not going to knock it. not going to knock it. There's nothing like a seasoned woman. Exactly. After all, free works it out. But you know what Beyonce does. Beyonce fans her hair out like Mariah Carey. Come on, we've talked about this before. Free works it out. She tries three times as hard and delivers. <laughs> And Beyonce, what does she do? Drops it like it's hot, fans her hair out, like Mariah Carey. And I love Mariah, but you know, she's a cold fish in my head. 
Hey, you might be on the phone. Do you think Mariah really knows how to get down? Yeah, I do. You do? I do. Who do you think's better in bed, Mariah Carey or Beyonce? Mariah. See? Wow. Beyonce. Hey, uh, Trev, who do you think is better in bed, Mariah or Beyonce, Beyonce. or Free? Beyonce. Beyonce is better than Mariah. Now, who do you think is better, Beyonce or Free in bed? Beyonce. Wow, wow. You think Beyonce really knows how to perform? She looks like she knows how to put it down. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway, let's keep talking on the phone. I mean, we, I have some sports news for you all, too. Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. I just wanted yeah. to make a comment with about Beyonce being pregnant. I don't think yeah. she's pregnant. Recently mm-hmm. at the 4040 opening at, in Atlanta City. Mm-hmm. That was on Tuesday night? Yeah, she was drinking. There's pictures of her with champagne and wine and stuff. Though. Were the bottles already open? Yeah. We're okay. Well, listen. When I'm really trying to get information out of people, I'll give you a little secret. Okay. My champagne is always brought to me open because I ask that it be replaced with ginger ale. So it appears like I'm getting as giggly as you. But in actuality, you're getting loose and giving me information I need. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. But mm, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so, though. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Well, I'll be watching the story. I, I believe. I believe now. I believe. Mm-hmm. There's a limo driver who overheard conversation. There's a whole there's a whole thing going. Okay. Um, you believe Free's pregnant? Um, not for Jay-Z, no. Mm. You think so, Wendy? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. I mean, nobody's seen her recently, so we really don't know how she Her career now. really wasn't that heated to begin with where she could just fall out of place for a moment. Yeah. You know, the, the people who she appealed to were... You know, these, you know, 15, 17, and 21-year-olds, you know, for the 106 in Park. And that is, that is, I mean, part of a whole generational problem of people not being able to remember their superstars. Free will mm-hmm. be quickly forgotten as yesterday's baby. Yeah, that's true. She's like, mm-hmm. So she can't afford to do it. And Free knows that. Free knows it. Mm-hmm. What other reason would you give her for dropping out of sight for so long? I don't, she doesn't really have a career. She has nothing else to fall back on. Like, we'll Which, still see all, AJ, but free? No. All the more reason for her not to fall back unless she's about to have that golden egg. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll see. I could be cynical. You know, nine months will tell. I guess yeah. nine. What would it be? Maybe maybe six more for free and maybe another eight for Beyonce. <laughs> Wendy, man. Michelle? Yeah. You're just having casual sex with him. Right. There is no engagement. No. He's got a girlfriend. So call. I'm pregnant now. Did I keep it? Wait, hold on for just one moment. I'm about to reach through the phone and crack her skull. <laughs> the Wendy Williams Experience. Wendy, man, the Wendy Williams experience. Okay. So, Get Rich or Die Trying opens in theaters, um, what is that, next weekend? Um, I don't blame people. For, yeah, well, I don't blame people for protesting the billboards. You know, I wince every time I see the billboards. Fortunately, they're none posted next to my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you have to look at that every day. It's kind of, I see one every day, though, when I come out of the Lincoln Tunnel and I come to Manhattan. <laughs> What's so funny? I mean, how are you going to explain that to your kids? You know what I mean? Like, how do people explain that to their kids? Is that the same way people explain about Miss Wendy's mouth here on the show? I don't know. I don't think it's the same. I don't think it's the same. I'm not holding a gun and a child. In one hand, it's the gun and the child. In the other hand, you know, like the gun's in his waist and he's got the kid. You got to protect your family. Oh, shut the hell up. You pull up to the microphone, Mr. Oh. Um, it's Friday. Where's the Hennessy? Where are you at? Where are you at? I'm in the studio. I'm in Philly. <laughs> you are? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Throwing up in the bathroom. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Bart, what are you celebrating? I mean, what's going on? We were just, tr- we were talking behind your back, deciding whether we need to do an intervention. <laughs> Trevor thinks that we do, but I said that he's not really a good judge because I used to be an offender right in his face every day, and he never knew. I don't need an intervention. I was Me and Goose just life. said you were celebrating life. That's all I was Mine. Doing. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know about drugs, but I know about alcohol. Oh. 
Do tell. Mm-hmm. We'll talk later. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, then there's another one. It's probably, I mean, both of the, to me, both of the ads for the movie are disturbing. The billboards. He's got his arm stretched out like this, and you see his back, very muscular and, and um, look very nice and juiced up. You know how 50s body is. Um, he's got the microphone in one hand and the gun in the other. Mm. And it's like, have you seen this ad? It's everywhere. It's very scary. It makes you want to see the movie, which, okay, you know, he brought home the point, but... Well, I mean that kind D- of dramatic stuff. effect. Hey, then it's very dramatic, Art. Yeah. Have you seen the actual ads, yeah. or you just? I've seen it before. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. Both of them. Yep, yep, yep. Were they in your neighborhood? No. <laughs> Are they anywhere near your precious daughter? No, 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 not at all. Exactly. So yeah. it's easy to take a long pull off something strong and a long swig off something in your life, Absolutely. without your daughter being around and say, "Yeah, it looks like a good movie." Absolutely. In, in somebody else's neighborhood, the sign is with the, the the billboard's fine, right? Exactly. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Tell Marsha it's payday here, and uh, I want to holler. <laughs> <laughs> Marsha Art said it's payday, and he wants to holler at you. Oh, Marsha's looking good, Art. I know she is. Yo, what he does? Hey, the Washington Post is reporting that they're considering moving the New Orleans Saints to uh, Los Angeles. Oh. Now I don't follow sports. Does anybody, any, any of you girls there in the studio, can you help me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, honey. <laughs> well, you know, the Saints, of course, haven't had a home since it was swept away in Hurricane Katrina. Yeah. They've been currently based out of San Antonio in Texas, but people at the Saints front office are saying there is no interest in the club being a part of San Antonio, whereas. L.A. hasn't had a team since the Raiders, and so there could be a chance that they could be the L.A. Saints. Mm. Eh, that's a bit of your sports news. Mm. Oh, in other sports news, um, do you, do any of you uh, people know about football? Yeah. Have you heard the story about the guy from the Denver Broncos? His name is Dwayne Carswell. He's in critical but stable condition. Well, apparently last night he was in a five-car pileup. <laughs> yeah. And no drugs or alcohol or anything like that. He was in surgery still five hours after the crash. Initially, he was in critical um, condition. Now he's critical but stable. Apparently, um, he was in one of the three cars traveling southbound and two northbound cars on this particular road that he was on (coughs) collided with each other and veered into the southbound lane. Ouch, don't you hate when that happens? Several other cars were extensively damaged. Um, they showed his car on TV, and the images on TV were the front driver's side and the rear driver's side just crunched in, and the driver's side door just, you know, cr- crunched in. He was driving a 1994 wow. Chevrolet sedan. Damn. Wow. And um, they say that, that um, other parts of the door, or some other doors on it or whatever the hell, were torn off completely. I didn't see that angle. But he's been in the NFL for 12 years. He's 33. Broncos Broncos is his only team that he's been with with the NFL. He came there right from the um, the Liberty. Lou, do you know anything about football? Why why does it matter with men these days? You know, my father. My father, you know, I grew up in a football house. My friend in my head, Holly Robinson, you know? That's when men were men. Well, they watched football. Woman, get me my dinner. And my mother was dutiful. Yes, dear. Even balancing her work and, you know, she had a career and everything like that. There's no football going in our house and there's no woman getting my dinner either. Boy, how times have changed. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. Marsha, do you watch football? Oh, <laughs> how you doing? Oh, Marsha, doesn't? pull up to the microphone. Uh-oh. <laughs> I thought you were my feminine little flower. Oh, no. How you doing? How you doing? Look, um, you doing? <laughs> do you know this player, Dwayne Katz- Cartswell? Put on your microphone. Nobody hears you. Marsha, is it a good move for the Saints to go to Los Angeles? Nobody hears you. Oh, <laughs> they shut your mic off permanently from the back office. That bitch will not be getting fame wow. off the back <laughs> of this show. Uh-oh. <laughs> <sighs> well, here's some more sports. Um, some more sports talk. 
um, Evander Holyfield's 13-year-old niece, Priscilla Holyfield, just landed a role in Sheila's Story, which is a drama about an African-American... Okay. Don King's roast was earlier today in New York City, and everybody was there. Oh, they showed up? <laughs> or or else, you know Don. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when Don sends an order, it gets understood. That's like the Suge Knight. Yeah, I was equating them one and the same yesterday. They both they both rubbed me the same way. You know what I mean? I like both of them a lot, but both of them, boy, they got a dark side. Mm. You don't want to mess with them. Okay, so where are we going from here? We got one full hour. I keep forgetting that the telephones actually work. All right. <laughs> so we'll talk to you. The usual numbers. Even though I'm in Philly, it's 866-GET-WENDY. It's still the same telephone number. Don't you love that? You were alive. All right. The only keep thing up here that works. <laughs> 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 keep it where you got it. Let me get back to my Ishka Bibble fries and cheese and peppers. And mm. You said you wasn't going to eat that. I lied. You oh! said you weren't going to drink. Oh! <laughs> you promised you'd be good. <laughs> He does have a problem. Easy. Why does Goose say one minute and then I continue talking and I'm not getting cut off? I don't know. Just Goose, talk. how much time is on the break? Just talk. Uh, just Hello? Talk. What? Here we, here we go. Here we go. We count down now, Wendy. All right. Well, <laughs> count down. Entertain, Art. Do it. Okay. I said a 10 and 9 and 8 and 7. How you doing? And 6. How you doing? And 5 and, and, and 4. 3, 2, 1. How you doing? I've been talking to the young lady. She called me at home and I was listening to your show. And she um, says that she doesn't know any straight guys that listen to the Wendy Williams show. No. Plenty of straight guys listen to the show. All right. So, yeah. Ow. So, what should I tell her? Just. It, tell her how you do it. The Wendy Williams Experience. Here's what's happening from 107.5 WBLS, home of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and the $107,000 cash guarantee. Okay, New Jersey, the New Jersey Office of the Attorney General is reminding you that Tuesday, November 8th is Election Day. Be powerful, be heard, vote, and make a difference for your city, state, and future. Visit njelections.org or call 877-NJ-VOTER. WBLS. WBLS is a proud sponsor of the GED Connection. Improve your reading, writing, and math skills by watching TV 411. Fridays at 12.30 p.m. on Channel 13. BLS. This calendar is sponsored by Life is Not a Fairy Tale by American Idol winner Fantasia. Available wherever books are sold. From Fireside. When you will spread my limbs. Don't come around here with that Wendy Williams. Get your facts straight or shout. Experience. 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 Yeah. We knew it was only going to be a matter of time before... Britney Spears and Kevin Federline's baby's mama, Shar uh, Jackson, got together with Britney's first husband, Jason Alexander. Okay, so listen to how it went down. This is the guy that Britney was married to for like five minutes. Actually, it was 55 hours. Um, he's 24, Shar is 29, and they went out together in Los Angeles to share war stories and, you know, dish on... You know, Brittany and Kevin and that whole bit. And they apparently took a lot of paparazzi pictures, too. Because here's one right here. Body language is saying... It's friendly. At least right here. This doesn't look like they're messing around with each other. I like the idea of them going out together, though. Something real sneaky about that. They say Julia Roberts is heading for divorce. She'll be the next one in divorce court. Well, that's what happens, Julia, when you... Think that somehow your marriage is going to turn out fine after you steal your present husband while he was married. For t- Danny Motor was married to Vera, the makeup artist. They were married. Now, they might have been going through problems. Maybe, maybe. Because you can't blame it all on Julia. But they were married. Miss M- Multi Million Dollar Movie Deal. Is working on a movie. Danny is part of the lighting staff. Next thing you know, Miss Multimillion Dollar thinks that she can have anything she wants, like another woman's husband. 
and starts messing around with Danny Motor while he's married. The rest is pretty much history. He and Vera got divorced. He married Julia. And gee, now you wonder why in a minute we're going to be able to say to her, welcome to the world of single motherhood. Bitch, you stole another woman's man. And you did it in public. All funky and desperate-like. Desperate. All your money and your supposed good looks, you stole just like a desperate chicken head. Oh. Remember when she used to wear the T-shirt around Holly? A-Lo Vera. Vera's low. Vera's... Ooh. Easy. She promised Danny that she would lay off a career for the first three years of the twins' life. So now it's been three years. Excuse me, for the first three years of their marriage. And so now, supposedly, the three years is up. I have no idea. I haven't been counting. I pretty much lost interest in Julia when she successfully stole um, Danny. I've been waiting for the left foot to drop because how you get him is how you keep him. And ain't no good going to come to you until you find a man of your own at all. Hey, Wayne. Thanks for the champagne. You drinking too? Give me this. Wayne's here from Delaware, everybody. How you doing, Lou? Louie's here, too. <laughs> How you doing, Lou? Oh, don't you worry. These are my peoples. But I'm in Philly. I get held down here, too. No. Jay-Z might be looking for me now that I exposed his broads. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ooh, I'll tell you what. It's like a deserted island here at the radio station. I got to tell you something. I understand, you know, Hove is in town and everybody, you know, from my radio station is probably over there in the dressing room and, you know, serving them up every which way. What you want, Hova? What can I get you, Hova? But here's the thing. Just remember, Hova works for us. We the people. Uh-oh. <laughs> you buy his music. Radio stations like my radio station here in Philly, like the radio stations you all listen to, play the music. Cheer him on tonight, Hova, Hova. But I just hate when the radio brethren, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, you were at Ishka Bibbles. We've already talked about who he's bringing out. We've already, we already had that discussion. Anyway, it's the weekend. Are you drinking? Yeah, and I'm drinking. <laughs> Me too, right out of the bottle. Four Everybody people in the nice. room. Four people in the room, and in true Wendy style, I swigged out of the bottle so nobody asked me for nothing. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get them. I'm going to be at this club later on tonight, too, in Manhattan, Amazora. Ooh. I guess I'll swig out of the bottle there, too. Uh-oh. The main reason why I do that is because uh, glasses at clubs are never clean. you got to be kidding me. You know, you're sipping after the next person. He has herpes all over his mouth. Oh. You know, she's been living with AIDS for 20 years. And they're all at the club and everybody's partying together and having a great time. And it's so dark, you can't see all the cold sores and the infestations crawling around on the glass. The bottle washers in the club are bitter because their job, their 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 station in life is to be a bottle damn washer (laughs) while you have a good time and splash money around and dance and jump off. So they wash the glasses in the club. To me, in my mind, this is in my mind. You know, I have an active imagination. They'll... Oh. Oh. Right? Yeah. Now you understand why I eat everything with plastic forks? Yes, I do. No, I uh, no, I can relate to that. Now you understand why when you see me out in a club, you might wonder, well, well, you know, why does she drink out of a bottle? And I know make jokes about it like, you know, am I an effing lady or what? Yeah. You know, I do have home training. My parents have taught me better. But I got to tell you something. I'm out in the clubs way too much, and I'm just way too cynical about glasses and stuff. It's like all. It's like you all who who get five on it with people in the dark. You don't. You might know your cousin Tay Tay, but you don't know those two with them. But as long as Tay Tay says it's, they're okay, then it's okay. And all you are passing around the same thing. In the meantime, you've neglected to notice through all your blind from the ism that he's got a huge cold sore oh. on his mouth. And the tip to the blunt is wet as I don't know what. Just all kind of germs fermenting. Next thing you know, you bring home to your wife, and those are the same lips that kiss your daughter, and you got herpes. This, ugh. So, yeah. (laughs) 
I do drink out of the bottle. Um, Tony Yayo, the source. See, this is the thing. Like, I like the people at the Source magazine, Dave Mays and Benzino, but I think it's probably time for, like, a telephone call or, or a fireside chat or something. What the hell is going on with the Source magazine? You guys haven't paid your taxes in a million years? You owe $150,000 in back taxes? What? Oh, man. Source magazine, you're being exposed like that? I mean, you know, every once in a while, and there's just so much dirt up in the game and so much hate up in the game, and damn. Say it ain't so, Dave Mays. Benzino. You got Tony Yayo is saying that... Well, he's responding actually to... Excuse me. Oh. Tony, Tony Yayo is responding um, to the Source magazine. Oh, I don't even feel like going through it. I'm just a little distracted by the whole thing. Forget Tony Yayo's thing. In a minute, there's not going to be a source. I don't have a today's paper. I'm sorry. Trev, I know you read the paper every morning on the, on the subway, right? Every day. Okay. Did you see the article in today's Daily News regarding the source going broke? I didn't read it in the paper, but I heard about it from yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. Go ahead and say it. Star and Buck Wild. Yeah, that's why I heard it. <laughs> yeah. Well, my sister's addicted to them. They're on in Miami. Wanda? My sister Wanda, exactly. I got to tell you something. She called me up. She goes to me. No lie. This is approximately three weeks ago, maybe when they started down there. She says, Wendy, Wendy, what do you know about a man named Star? And I said, oh, that's my man. So she says, Wendy, they are the new morning show here in Miami. Wendy, after I drop the kids off at school, you know, my sister is very conservative. The kids are grown grown enough to drive and pay their own damn mortgage. And she's still, you know, protecting their precious ears from the hater. <laughs> but um, she said, Wendy, Wendy, after I drop them off at school. And who's the white girl? Yeah, she goes into the whole thing. I listen to Steve Sudo. Oh, me too. Oh, please. I'd be real busy in the morning. So anyway, so what's the word from the source? I'm fading fast. How much more time do we have left on the show today? Let's go to the telephone. Oh, my God. Yes. So stupid. Hello? Hi, Wendy. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? All right. I'm trying to win some money. Wendy. Oh, no, 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 no. Damn, damn, damn. No, it's not time. Sorry. Oh, bye. it's not time. No, okay. no, no. You got to wait for Steve Harvey to say call, okay? Okay, thanks. Bye. Hello? Is everybody going to be saying the same thing? Uh, did I win that? No, no. You got to call when... I'm Hello? sorry. When, no, Thank when you. Steve Harvey says call, then you call, okay? Uh, Thank you. Dear Wendy, how come no one's talking about how much Run's oldest son looks like Jason Jam Master J. Mizell? <laughs> he does kind of look like him. Art is toasty in here for real. He looks like, like, how like come him. nobody talks about how Dame Dash looks like Jermaine Dupree? Oh. oh. Exactly. And that lady yesterday on the facts made a good one. How come nobody talks about how Amarosa looks like Billy Ocean? Oh, <laughs> Ooh, it's the weekend. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going out tonight? Me. <laughs> I'm going to Club Amazora. Are you going to be at the club art? Are you going to see me in the place? Okay, good. Yeah. Listen to this. Dear Wendy, let me just start off by saying I love the show. Anywho, I'm a single woman of a certain age, and even though I know better, I got myself involved with my trainer at the gym. And yes, girl, he's dark and chocolate and bald. Oh. Cue the music art. Uh-oh. Now, Wendy, this is what she says in the facts. She's orchestrating the whole facts. She says, art, cue the music. <laughs> yeah, right, because she's a personal trainer. Damn. <laughs> What's she thinking? <laughs> now, Wendy, while I take full responsibility for my actions, I got myself involved with unprotected sex with him. Oh! Cue the music, Art. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, she's saying this to you. Cue the music, Art. Right, right. 
So while we were mushing it up, Wendy, I knew he had a girlfriend that he bought his second house with. And while we were sleeping together a total of two years, I knew full well that he'd never leave his girlfriend for me. And I was cool with that. For real, Wendy, I was. Even though he would jo- joke with me about, I would joke with him about getting married and he would say, no, never. Mm-hmm. So one afternoon at the Atlantic Antics over in Brooklyn, he called me and said he was coming, to, he was coming over. So I said, no problem. Sidebar, on Monday I called him and told him that I had a situation that I needed taken care of. And he told me that he was getting married. And I said, what? Cue the damn music, Art. Wendy, I was like, congratulations. But financially, you got to help me out with this. Uh Uh-oh. Or at least half, she goes on to say. Wendy, I am now miscarrying. Oh, (laughs) That's not funny. She said, Wendy, I am now in the process of miscarrying. And they told me that I have to have a DNC procedure. I know you know about that. Wendy, I'm scared as hell, and I don't have the money to pay for the procedure. Now, you may say this is what you get, but I never once stressed or stalked him. Wendy, I now know better. Please help me. I know this was a stupid lesson, honestly. But, Wendy, to make a long story short, he needs his spot blown up. Now, while his soon-to-be wife is preggers already, I need my money. (laughs) And here's the sidebar hint. He works as a trainer in a gym in Greenwich Village. Easy, easy. (laughs) She actually said... Exactly. Miss Honey... (laughs) (laughs) I wish you well with your DNC. Sorry to hear about what happened. It's Wendy, man. Hi. My boyfriend gave himself a wet Susie or whatever. He said he almost burnt his off. The Wendy Williams Experience. You're calling number 10. No. (laughs) No. Yes, you are, my friend. You just picked up $1,000. Girl, I'm spinning. Who knows? You could be our next winner. Where do you listen to BLS? I listen to BLS at home and at work. Let everybody know the only radio station in New York with the $107,000 cash guarantee. 107.5 WBLS. Hey, this is your man Steve Harvey in the mornings. If you call me right now, you can get your share of $107,000. We just giving you $1,000, but that's still a lot of money. We call number 10. One thousand dollars right here from 107.5 WBLS. Wow. wow. You ready, Art? Yeah, ready, baby. Let's do it. You call number one. Ah, oh, you call number two. You three, biatch. Number four. Five. Hey. Eight. Nine. Hey, and guess what? You are the winner. You just won one thousand dollars. Who is this? Yo, who is this? Jen. Hey, Jen, you are the tenth call. You just won one thousand dollars. No. Yes, it is. Where are you calling from? New York, Manhattan. Well, look, congratulations. You just picked up your share of one hundred and seven thousand dollars. The cash giveaway guarantee. Everybody else, listen for Steve to give out the cue to call in Monday morning at seven fifteen a.m. Thanks for listening, and tell everybody the only station in New York. With the $107,000 cash giveaway, Jen. WBLS. Holla! Hey, Staten Island. Hey, New Jersey. Brooklyn, the Bronx. Listen up. Hey, hey, hey. It's the queen of radio, Wendy. (laughs) Wendy Williams. (laughs) Oh, ouch. It's the weekend. Shout out to the whole locks. Sheik Looch called behind the scenes while the music was playing. I was in the other room doing commercials and stuff. They're in the Locksinator. That's the name of the um, vehicle. It's getting them down here. I don't know how they're traveling, actually. But shout out to Sheik and shout out to Jadakiss. Hi, Jason. And shout out to Styles P. Shout out to the whole D Block. The locks will be in the building tonight in Philadelphia for Power 99, oh. my New York, my um, Philly affiliate radio stations. Powerhouse 2005. Last night, they performed in New York. Of course, the theme of the um, concert is Jay-Z and Friends. Part of the Friends, well, the Locks, and, of course, Rihanna, who 
some would say is more than friends, but that remains to be seen. Um, <laughs> Tia Marie. Oh. Uh, you know what? A Tierra Marie, I don't believe, is going to be there. I haven't seen Tierra Marie. Wait, hold on. Let me ask Marsha. Wait, hold on a second. Marsha, is Tierra Marie going to be there tonight? I haven't seen her name in anything. She's going to be at the club. She's not going to be at that concert because I know Beyonce's put it down. If i got to be lamped up for nine months waiting for something to happen, you keep her. Uh, sorry, Rihanna. I just got your name mixed up in something. I meant to say Tierra Marie. Friend to the show, but I, you know, there's a little gleam in the eye. In the meantime, um, Jay Z's going to, uh, excuse me, um, excuse me, I'm trying to talk. What is the matter with you? Why do people always act like, I mean, I know this is like a fun show and. You know, that's it's the Wendy Williams experience. But, you know, everybody at the last minute came through with the with the drinks. And so all the powerhouse passes are going. Well, we got like six bottles of champagne and oh. four bottles of Hennessy. I'm coming. And people just walk in and out of the studio and beginning having conversations with me. They don't understand. I'm talking to you. Anyway, um, what was I saying? Anyway, we'll see how the drama unfolds. You know, who's going to have their baby first? If there's babies to be had, will it be free? Who has disappeared off the face of the earth? It makes perfect sense that she's pregnant with Jay-Z's baby. Or will it be Beyonce, who wasn't thinking about messing up her corporate money by getting pregnant? Because it's against all the corporate principles on the contract. But I will not have the next bitch have my man's baby before me. You know what I mean? Money be damned. I will, you know... Leave me alone, Matthew. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean. Anyway, that's the word. And I'm only saying that's the word, that both of them are, you know, pregnant. Wow. Hey, Sheik, can you do me a favor tonight? Shout out to the whole D block. Styles, Jada, can somebody in that, in the Luxinator, can somebody... Get close enough to the center of Hove's brain and just, you know, just, yo, man, we were on the turnpike riding down. We heard a little something, something. And then after he gives his answer, study his body language. You know, did he say no and pooch out the Joe Camels at you? Or did he say no? Nah. Well, anyway. Shout out to Nichelle in Los Angeles. Hey, Art. Art. Yes. Paul Wall's new wife is black. I, I, see, we said that. You knew that. Can you please go to the web before <laughs> before we actually... So does that does that make his wiggerness authentic? You know, I, yeah, I, I can say that. Yeah. Yeah. Go to, cake, go to cake and ice dash cream dot blog spot. And apparently there's a picture of them at the wedding. Okay. Cake and ice. Wait, what is it? Never mind. Marsha, are you going to the web right now? Here you go, Marsha. Never mind. Girls work faster. Thanks, Marsha. Wendy. Uh huh? Also, this 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 stupid machine. Come closer to the microphone, This Arnt. dumb machine been acting up and then all kind of buttons been like buttons been pressing without. So if anybody was offended by any buttons, you know, it wasn't us. It's like a lot of technical difficulties going on in the studio. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so. oh, whatever. Okay. Julia Roberts is ready to adopt her third child. And she says it's a special thing. Uh, there's something about making a choice, waking up and traveling somewhere and finding your family. So she likes that. You know, there's, and there's nothing wrong with that. Her uh, first adopted son, Maddox, is four. Um, and he's from Cambodia. The um, child, Zahar, is the daughter. And she's from Ethiopia. She's nine months. And Julia's ready to adopt her third. Good for her. So I got the top list of dead celebrities. Are you ready? Well, Elvis is a... Number one. Elvis Presley? From beyond the grave, he's still making $45 million. Did you, did you, you know he's last year? Did you know he tried to buy the year, uh, like Apollo? Like one year. Then the cartoonist who created Peanuts, Charles Schultz. He's next on the list. He made $35 million last year alone. John Lennon, he's number three, $22 million. These are uh, dead celebrities and how much money they make. John Lennon's number three, made $22 million last year. Andy Warhol, uh, do you see her? Did you go to, um, what's Paul Wall's wife look like? Wait, pass me the note. I can't see. It's transparent and I'm, I've had drinks. Girl, you got to see these pics. Uh-oh, hold on. Fire up 
up all the microphones so I, my voice doesn't get lost as I walk around there. Marsha, turn on the microphones. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Oh, she is? She is. She's cute. She looks like Gabrielle Union. Oh. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. And that's his longtime girlfriend, too. That's good. I forgot what I was telling you before I went over there. Oh, I was talking about the dead celebrities. Um, Marlon Brando is, uh, what was I, number four with Andy Warhol? Yes. $16 million last year. Dr. Seuss made $10 million last year. Marlon Brando made $9 million. Marilyn Monroe and Lord of the Rings um, author J.R.R. Tolkien um, made, they tied for, I think it were up to eighth place, made eight million last year. George Harrison, Johnny Cash, Irving Berlin round out the three way tie. Seven million dollars a piece. Oh. How much did Jimmy J.J. Walker make? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you all, luck. I love you for being here. Um, I'm going over to the Wachovia Center now to see what all I can see. <laughs> Wendy. And then later on tonight, I'll be in Queens at Club Amazora, hosting the big party after the comedy. Tomorrow, I'll be ba- making an appearance in my house where I'll be sleeping all day. Oh. I don't know what my guys are going to be doing, but as long as they do it without me, <laughs> that's, all, that's what's going to count. Wendy. What is it, Art? And pull up to the mic. Speaking of dead people. you. Speaking of dead people, did you know that Elvis Presley had the audacity to walk up into the Apollo Theater one day and try to buy it? <laughs> and the Splaboos <laughs> told him no. Do you realize that being here in Philadelphia and listening to how far you are off the mic, I now understand why people can't stand when you talk? Because, you know, you're a very funny man, but now I'm getting as aggravated as them. If you're going to talk, get on the mic. Nobody cares what you have to say from back there in the back of the room. Well, mic. how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Hey. Ow. Hey. I'm gay. I'm a home at. I like girls. I'm gay. Oh! I like girls. Winnie's gay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you all. Have a lovely weekend. I love you for listening. Uh, thank you to nobody for stopping by from Powerhouse. <laughs> You know, I traveled all the way to Philly to broadcast. I figured I could at least get a damn PD crack up in here. Thank you, nobody. Uh, but thank you very much to, um, what's his name? Um, Marsha, who drove? I forgot. She? No, who drove us down here? Thank you very much to Mike, Mike Barino, though, for the drive. How you thank doing? You, How you doing? <laughs> How you doing, Michael? I know you. <laughs> Hi, Queen Diva. All right, you all. I got to go. I love you for listening. We'll talk on Monday, okay? Um, and for everybody in Philly, I'll see you at Powerhouse. For everybody in New York, I'll see you later tonight at Club Amazura in Queens. Okay, take care. Bye. Peace party, people. <laughs> see you later. Good night. Program complete. What kind of show is this anyway? Different. How different? Impactful. Um, cutting edge. Let's take this form, this very American tradition of entertainment into the 21st century, the new millennium. Okay, okay, no, no. Well, what's the name of the show? The Experience. I really, really like this. You, you know how I know? I'm getting a boner. Have you lost your mind? Do you know how much mail we will get? There's no such thing as bad publicity. The content of the show is just politically incorrect. Exactly! Who, who are the characters? You got characters involved? We have three-dimensional characters. What do you got? How about Poker No Day? Oh, here we go, dealing with these Negroes again. Mm. <laughs> Artie, life of the party. Your eyes are closed, a mouth is a mouth, a toe is a toe, and a booty is a booty. <laughs> this is gonna be crazy! We're gonna hit him with the bomb, we're gonna yell this, we know who we're gonna get to star in the show, because we, we, need, we need a star to carry the show. The queen of all media, Wendy Williams, baby. Folks will be outraged, outraged. The Wendy Williams Experience. Black.
Yo, what's up? This is Anthony Hamilton. Hey, yo, boy, I be a bitch. I'm Ken, you hear me? This is Busy Bone, the kid from Bone. The Rock and figure don't find the speaker's bone. I'm steady speaking oh. up this morning. 107.5 WBLS. We're R&B and Hip Hop Connect. Oh, it's the weekend. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> shout out to everybody in Jersey. Special shout out to Bridgeport, Connecticut. Thanks for turning us on. Bronx, we see you, Staten Island. Hey. You know, um, I was asking about Dick Clark the other day, and co- coincidentally, um, between my asking and right now, I found out more information about Dick Clark. They say he's far sicker than we realize. Um, that setback um, that occurred during the stroke. Oh, my gosh. I, it was something, because I knew he had the stroke. Oh, and then he had a second stroke. And we, John Q. Public, didn't realize that he had two strokes at, you know, within the same uh, frame period. But they say he's very sick as his friends and family are scared. Um, Everybody's keeping quiet. But apparently, um, he's diabetic. And his compromise, it's, you know, the diabetes is compromising his chance for recovery. They say diabetics are at great, um, great increased risk of stroke. And diabetics who have strokes or have a greater risk of dying or becoming permanently uh, disabled as a result of the stroke. So, you know, Dick Clark is 75 years old, and as we all know, he missed his his yearly New Year's Eve extravaganza in Times Square. The stroke, um, everybody, the first stroke happened back in April, and two-thirds of the people who are diabetic, they say, die of heart disease or stroke. So that was a huge red flag when he had the first stroke. Then he had the second stroke while under the care of the first stroke. So, um, And they say he's like a prisoner trapped in his own body, um, apparently. Um, it's weakened his immune system, and he's having a, a really difficult time uh, recovering. His wife is with him, of course. He's got three kids. And um, the doctors are trying to uh, balance the medication for his heart. Uh, while regulating his blood sugar and um, it's just not looking so good for Dick Clark, as long as you asked, or that was me asking, but you know. Okay, so Big Tigger on BET, um, we all learned today that he's, uh, his show, The Basement, has been canceled. The last episode is going to be on Monday, and apparently that's when Big Tigger, you know, the premise of the show is that, you know, he lives in this basement of his mother's house. The mother's going to show up downstairs, so we're going to see who she is, whoever. Um, I don't know who it's going to be. Maybe the Sandman from the Apollo dressed up as a woman. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe Kim Whitley. Dressed up in older garb. I don't know. You know, word is it could be Patty LaBelle. Patty, I know you're not going to get involved in something like this, but uh, you never know. Anyway, uh, Tigger's mom is selling the house. Thus, he's got to move out of the basement. But um, he's still going to be on BET. He's got some kind of style show um, with Jessica Rabbit. Not Superhead, but the other one. Jessica Rabbit, Melissa, Melissa Ford, the video girl. I've never seen the show. When does this come on? I don't know. I don't know. Are you going to Donald Trump's wedding? Yeah, I'm busy that day. I won't be going. You? Yeah, you're busy too. Yeah. Did, are you going to send a gift? Are you going to get it from the registry or what? <laughs> um, well, it's a guest list of who's who's. Uh, who's who? I mean, besides me and you being invited, of course. Barbara Walters, uh, the, the Jones Reynolds, Carson Daly, Puffy and his mom, Janice Combs, were invited. Jay-Z and Beyonce were both invited. Of course, his kids will be there. And his child with Marla, Tiffany, who's 11. Um, Kelly Grippa, Reed, you know, Nick and Jessica, Diane Sawyer. So some of the details of the wedding included that the ceremony is going to take place at um, a church by the sea with stained glass windows and whatnot. Now, why was I hearing that Donald paid for this church to have an all new ceiling just to look, you know, twice as beautiful for his wedding? Um, the menu cards are trimmed in tassel and inscribed with gold leaf. And of course, um, there's going to be lots of champagne. They say that the guests will be sipping from the finest Waterford Crystal stemware and enjoying a wedding feast um, with their, their platinum dipped silverware. The centerpieces will feature white lilies and cream roses and um, ribbons and lace and whatnot. 
And the dress that uh, Melania is going to wear is top secret, but everybody believes that it's being done by Dior. And um, they say it's in Florida, which means lots of yachts. Donald has chartered most of the yachts at the three, you know, different marinas, I guess, that are the who's who, to ferry his guests. Big to do. Yet nobody's talking. Like, a big deal, yet nobody's talking. I don't care. I'm not going. And I'm not sending a gift either. (laughs) Uh, Dear Wendy, please help me. My boyfriend and I have been together for 13 months. We don't have any children. But I have a daughter from a previous relationship, and he has a son from a previous relationship. We just don't have kids together. Now, we live together, and we've been living together, and he had been, for a while, struggling to find a good job that he didn't have to scramble for. And, no, Wendy, I wasn't taking him shopping, but I did help him and look out for him, helped him fax his resumes and whatnot. Well, Wendy, I guess he got fired or excuse me, tired. I'm sorry. I mist- I mistook her her F for a T. I guess he got tired of um, barely having any money and not being able to take care of me. So he drops the bombshell on me last night that he started pimping. What is it with men in this? This is like the second time in the last three weeks. Like, you know, a man has turned into a real life pimp. Wendy, I'm a mess. I'm mad. I'm sad. I'm disgusted. I don't know what to do. Damn, I love this. And we planned on a future together, but I can't deal with this. Am I wrong for not want, willing to accept just any old thing for a dollar? I don't know what to do. Help. That's from uh, Dawn. I mean, both are wrong, but if you give me a choice between pimping and maybe being a supplier to the offenders... I'll take the supplier to the offenders because pimping is a whole nother introduction. You know what I'm saying? A pimp. The, oh, <laughs> Can you understand that or is that sick? Maybe I shouldn't have said that. I mean, I don't want either. But pimping? Pimp, pimping? Oh, I realize, you know. Oh, damn. I'd break out. That I would not be able to deal with. Absolutely not. I would break out. I would absolutely break out. I don't know how old you are. You didn't put it on here. Um, um, but you, I'd break out. You don't have any kids together. You've been together for 13 months. I don't even know why you bothered executing this letter. <laughs> you know, this doesn't even require a formal breakup. 13 months. Then he's going to turn to you and drop a bombshell. He's pimping. Pack up your stuff and leave. Don't even leave him a note. She sounded really young, but you know, this show reaches a lot of people and everybody's got problems. Me, you, oh, we don't, a lot of times we don't talk about them. You know, we just sit back and listen to other people talk about their problems. And some of you all think that I make stuff up, but um, we all have our Jerry Springer, uh, Wendy Williams experience, bombs going off in our lives. We all do. And here's a woman. She says, hey, Wendy, I must say, I love your show. I'm a woman over 50. And I'm married. My husband does his thing and I do mine. But Wendy, what is a girl to do when her jump off is jumping off better than her husband? (laughs) Wendy, my jump off is like making me want to do more with him than with my husband. What is a girl to do? Me and my husband do have a lot of issues. I mean, he cheats. But because I'm married, I try to hang in there but I think I'm tired of hanging in there give a sister some good advice signed over 50 well I understand where you might want to break off, break out you know from your husband and live your own life but will your jump off is your jump off really I mean you gotta examine this and this is not just for this woman this is for women of all ages with jump offs if you were totally free would your jump off be interested in you or is part of your jump off's interest in you, aside from the sex being good, that um, he doesn't have to obligate or she doesn't have to obligate to you? You know what I mean? I don't know how old your jump off is. And, and by the way, woman, just by virtue of you listening to this show, I know you are 50, the new 40. If not in looks, then certainly in spirit. But let's just talk about 50 for real. Unless your jump off is 80. 
know what I mean? Nobody wants that. <laughs> and I'm not saying that that's old. But you know how the game goes these days? Hell. Women feel it at from 35 up, I would say. Some women go through it starting for 30, but from 35 up, women start to feel it. You don't feel it every day. You don't feel it all the time, but you feel that little age. You feel that little, you know, you know what I mean? Dave, you follow what I'm saying. If you were jumping off with a 50-year-old woman who looks spectacular, and I'm talking spectacular, and she's married, if she decided to leave her husband, do you really want that? Mm. Right? You're just trying to wear out the last few years, Right? I mean, you know, and we all get older, God willing, you know, God, we all live to get older. And, and I guess, you know, I'd stay with your husband, not for nothing. I, and continue jumping because he's cheating, you're cheating. I mean, if you're if you're OK with it, if what you're saying is you're so soft and pink now that you can't take being with your husband and him cheating anymore, then, you know, by all means, leave. But, you know, I'd get a good life insurance policy on my husband and um, and and vice versa, mutual respect, you know, make sure the bills are paid. And, you know, I love you. We've been married for a long time, but, you know, I'm 50 and, and you've been cheating for ages and I got my jump offs and I still love you in an understanding kind of Ruby D, Ozzy Davis. And, hey, those those stories are crazy kind of way. You understand? It's us. It's me and you regardless. I'm not going anywhere. Or, you know what? It, you're 50. You're still young enough to have a new lease on life. You know, like Ivana Trump, who's 50 plus. Hot and popping with like a 32-year-old uh, jump-off boyfriend. She hasn't married him. You know what I mean? She gets her surgery, keeps her looks up and whatnot. But she's not in denial of her age. Look, there's lots of life after 50. I just don't know where you are in your life. Like, do you have a great job? You know, can you, I mean, do you really have to sit around and haggle over a big, you know, lengthy divorce process? Or can you, you know, just get your divorce and move on? Are the kids out of the house? Are you asking me, should you stay with your husband or should you leave your husband because you want to leave for your jump off? Because that could be very unrealistic. Or are you saying that you want to leave your husband because you want to leave your husband and the jump off thing really has nothing to do with it? Your jump off. You know, like, dear Wendy, I'm in love with my jump off. She didn't say that. I'm thinking maybe she's just tired of, you know, her husband jumping off. Probably starting to get to her. She's getting a little pink. No room for pink in the jump off game. You gotta roll hard and black. And feelings aren't a factor. <laughs> What's up? This is Heather Hunter. Yeah, this your boy Lloyd. Can't the crunky boy look done? It's that fool, big sound. Right now, you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hey, everybody. Welcome to the bonus hour at three minutes after six o'clock on the Wendy Williams Experience. We're working on Monday. I had a dream. You know, this whole radio thing, it was not some fluke. So, therefore, I'm working. That's the way Dr. King would have wanted it. And um, if you're taking off Monday, uh, hopefully you can still find time in your day to turn us on. If not, I understand. But we're here, nevertheless. Much to Art and Dave's chagrin. Is the radio station closed for business on Monday? Yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm a little torn, you know, because on one hand, you know, you need, we should take the day to observe. But you know what we do. We in general, not just, I'm not talking about a black thing, I'm talking about a thing in general. You know, we don't celebrate presidents on President's Day. We go out and catch sales. So it'll be the same thing on the King holiday. You guys will be over at the Siemens Furniture, you know, catching the sale. And uh, the kids will be watching way too much TV. Nobody takes their kids or opens a book or teaches them, you know, more about the King holiday and, you know, whatnot. So you might as well live out your dream or be on the paper trace chase to fulfill your dream. Remember, the speech started with, I have a dream. Eh, anyway, I'll be here on Monday. I say all that to say. Vanessa Williams, his new album coming out on January 25th. She looks great on the album cover, too. Wow. Wowie, wow, wow, wow. Lots of extension, lots of tease and pop. Hair past the boobs, really big, really nice. Skinny, mini, mini, mini dress, lots of skin. Rick, she's saying, oh, 
I'm divorced. Come get me, boys. That's what she's saying. And the album is called Everlasting Love. The collection features um, a bunch of songs actually from the 70s, her interpretation. The first time ever I saw your face, I'll be good to you. And one less bell to answer. Okay, I don't want to hear the first time I ever saw your face. At least not on the show. But I'd love to hear, what is this? Um, is this, um, Ash, I mean, um, Renee and Angela's version of I'll Be Good to You? I would love to hear that from the Vanessa Williams CD. Everlasting love. Joints from, oh, the fifth dimensions, one less bell to answer. The Jacksons never can say goodbye. Harvest of the world from the Isley Brothers. But this is Vanessa's interpretation. They also say you can catch her performing on January 26th on The Bachelorette. I don't want to see my Vanessa Williams involved with these crazy reality shows. Like she doesn't need to. But okay, she's got a CD to push. Hmm. All right, Vanessa, Vanessa, what's, what's going on with the talk show? I'm not hearing. I hear more about Tyra Banks talk show. All right. Shout out to Vanessa Williams. She's a friend of the show. Maybe she'll come by here and promote her CD. Vanessa, I still carry that raccoon penis bone. It's in my wallet right now. She gave me a raccoon uh, bone and she said that they bring good luck. She gives them to you know people she likes. You know who I like on TV? Do you remember Christine Baranski on The Sybil Show? I liked her. She was Megan Mullally before Megan Mullally was Megan Mullally. The girl who plays a Karen on... on um, Will and Grace. Oh, that, that was that's Christine Baranski from Sybil, just reincarnated. Don't you remember her character? Well, she's coming back to TV in a show called In the Game. And apparently it's a comedy series that's going to be on ABC. And it's starring Jennifer Love Hewitt. Movie career girl nowhere? I mean, what's... I, I, you know what, though? I like how stars are finally starting to respect TV enough to do it. You know, like Whoopi Goldberg did it and stuff like that. You know... Movies are overrated. Oh, sure, they bring in all the money. But in my opinion, a real popularity, that everyday kind of popularity, comes from TV. I just love TV. So Jennifer Love Hewitt's going to have a... And I'm not going to even watch the show for Jennifer Love Hewitt. I want to see what role Christine Baranski is going to be playing. I like her. And guess what? Um, um, I've never seen Mickey Rooney's airborne ads, but apparently... Um, they were supposed to run during the Super Bowl. See, I've seen Rick, Mickey, Mickey Rooney, the old white guy, and his wife, Hawk Life Insurance, on TV. And I got to tell you something. He looks next to death on the, on the life insurance commercials. I'm surprised that they signed him on to do anything else. It's like his wife is on the insurance commercial propping him up. But apparently on February 6th, the Super Bowl, um, the, the Fox TV people have decided not to air Mickey Rooney's commercials for Airborne, the cold preventative, which I happen to love, by the way, Airborne. Apparently, he pulls down his pants and shows his backside <laughs> in a crazy old man moment, I guess. This is what it says. Fox declined Airborne's $1.2 million 30-second uh, spot. No, uh, not having seen the ad, I can't comment on why cold medicine would turn to Mickey Rooney's behind to promote its product. But suffice to say, in this day and age of seemingly limitless indecency, Fox has decided not to test the FCC at the Super Bowl. Especially with old wrinkle white booty. I mean, at least show us something firm and round. <laughs> Is Marcus Schenkenberg as cute on Surreal Life as, as he is in the ads? Like, I look at him on the Surreal Life, and I got to tell you something. If I had to choose between Peter Brady and Marcus Schenkenberg, I'd take Peter Brady. That sparkly person. And who knew he's 47? Somebody asked me earlier today how old he was. He's 47. And you know what? That romance with he and, and Adrian Kerry, it's real. Because now that the Surreal Life has actually finished filming, it says, look, two months after filming VH1's Surreal Life... Peter, uh, Christopher Peter Brady Knight, 47, told TV Guide Online that he's hooked up with America's Next Top Model winner, Adrian Kerry. And here's his quote. The highlight of it for me was Adrian and the whole romance that falls out of the whole thing. I was not taking her seriously for the first week. So this should be really interesting how this is going to play out on the air. By the way, as I speak to you, Adrian's sitting across from me. And then there's laughter. And then he goes on to say, and it's really sort of a lark, an example of what can happen in these environments. It was it was a pleasing outcome. She's got a huge heart and an old soul, and she's tons of fun. Didn't you think Adrian would hook up with Jane Wheedlin? 
and just, you know, go lesbo or something. <laughs> anyway, if you're just turning on the show, hey, it's the bonus hour. I'm Wendy Williams and Vaughn Harper in the quiet store. But, but, uh, come up seven. By the way, we have a comment line now. Well, that's, a, I mean, you know, that's an old thing in radio. It's just that we've never had one for whatever reason. But we have one now, and I just finished recording my message. I say, hi, you've reached the Wendy Williams experience. You know, leave your comments. So, you know, a lot of times, like, we leave the show, and you guys have comments about certain stuff. You know, get your comment on. And um, I can give you the telephone number if you take out take out a pen and paper. Everybody um, out outside of the New York metro area is going to be mad because it's not toll free. But oh well, if you really want to comment, then wait until the rates go down. Because you can do that. You don't have to call during the show. Just wait until the rates go down. Or wait until you get to work and use work phone. It's a 212 number. I'll give you the number in a moment. You got a pen? 212-592-0464. 212-592-0464. Five nine two zero four six four. It's the Wendy Williams uh, Experience Comment Line, and you can comment about anything, and leave us uh, good comments. And by the way, after midnight tonight, you know when you're with your lover, if you feel like just dialing the phone and resting the phone by your night table, we'll take those kind of comments too. Hey, so China was here earlier today, and clearly she was all hopped up on something or another. She wasn't in her right mind. So the interview was on the radio already, but I had tape rolling in the other room because that's when I go in and I say, you know, cut me a couple of drops, say, hey, it's China, it's the Wendy Williams experience or whatever. And I and I brought my camera in because prior to meeting China, you know, like I never bring my camera in. Very rarely, I bring my camera in for Faith. I bring my camera in for, you know, like a, a Kate Kutumbo. I, I liked with him. I brought my camera in for John Starks. There's some people I bring my camera in. You know, I want to capture the moment on camera. But basically, I'm not a picture nista. But today, I brought my camera in. I knew China was coming in. I had three more pictures on a roll of film that includes Brigitte Nielsen going wild with my camera on the set. I said, let me just finish off this roll. And China's coming in today. How perfect. So I'm in the other room, and we're getting it together. And here's some behind-the-scenes stuff. Dave, what do you have over there? We have three different clips, like 30 seconds apiece. Uh, just play some China. Take the music out so people can hear clearly. Let me shut up. Go. What's up? This is China Doll, uh. and you're listening to Wendy Williams Experience on 107.5 WBLS. All right, hey. Now say, this is China Doll, Joni Lauer, whatever you want to say. You know, okay, identify you, and then say, how you this doing? This is China Lauer. Wait, 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 how wait. you doing? I identify you, <laughs> and you know, and all that, all that. China! <laughs> all right, say, this is uh, okay. China Doll, Joni Lauer. How you doing? This is China Doll, Joni Lauer. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> Okay, now play another one, because that almost made um, that almost made everything seem normal. Oh, let's normal. take pictures, Arthur. Okay. Look, you do that again. I have my camera. I just, you know, I only bring my camera in for certain <laughs> situations. No, Toby. What are you calling Toby? You want to take a picture? Get the camera going. Get the camera going. Get the camera going. Toby. We're going to crack it, turn around. Oh, that's a brother's name. Come on, I only have three. Now I got you and Brigitte on the same thing. Whoa, what a roll of film. Tony, yeah. Tony, you got your hair. She took her hair off, everybody. Is it your hair? And, yeah, no, I have. And threw it at my interns. Yeah, no, no, no. How dare you? I, I'm not that angry when I get mad. I'll take my hair out and throw it a little more, too. I was just trying to seem as crazy as her, just to make her feel normal. I felt so bad for her. She took her hair out and she threw it at the intern girls. They were like horrified. You know, they're these young girls. They go to college. You know, they're 21 years old and they're really looking to, you know, I just, you know, wow. Pills are the level playing field, though, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Um, anyway, everybody. Mm. What are you doing this weekend? I'm going to Hartford tomorrow. I'm hosting a party. We got our son in um, in a program for eight weeks now, the swimming, and it's like two. It's like an hour and a half. The first part of it is, um, you know, the gym, you know, exercise and stuff like that with a bunch of other kids, and then uh, the second part of it is swim lessons. So we uh, we started that the other week, and so that that's what I do on Saturdays now. Which is cool, you know, it gets us out of the house and we're out of the house by 10 o'clock in the morning. We get back in the house after groceries and stuff by like 2 o'clock. It's a perfect time for him to take a nap and me too. <laughs> you know. Um, did you take down your Christmas decorations? Why are some of my neighbors not only, you know, it's like if you haven't taken down your Christmas decor, what? What? <laughs> to me, it's like if you haven't taken down your Christmas decorations, then just do us all a favor. Don't plug them in. Don't acknowledge them. You know what I mean? Just just don't plug them in because it's over, Johnny. 
I got neighbors still plugging in their Christmas decorations. It makes me so mad. <laughs> la la. Jennifer Lopez has a shoe line coming out, and the shoes are really nice. They're pretty sexy. It was raining so hard today, and I found these, um, you know, before I got my bunion surgery, I had this whole, um, like, like shoe shopping spree of shoes, you know, because, you know, when my feet are all fixed up and I have no more bunions, I'll be able to wear these, these, and these. And today it was raining so hard, and I found some shoes in the closet from my uh, futuristic thinking about, you know, when my feet are not swollen anymore, my bunions are down, I'll be able to wear, you know, cuter shoes. So I have these shoes on. Um, they're rain shoes, but they're stilettos. These are cute, aren't they, Art? As soon as I came in, Art clutched his pearls. He said, where'd you get your shoes? And I said, I got them, you know, back in the spring when I knew I was going to get my bunionectomy. I'm not really into rain shoes. Like, a lot of girls wear wellies and, and whatnot. You know, you know, those rubbery shoes and stuff. La, 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 la. Jennifer Lopez shoes, though, are really cute. Really stylish. They're going to be selling them at Nordstrom's and Macy's. And a few, you know, boutiques and stuff. And the shoes will be available in major department stores in March. You know, she's a shoeista. So while we know she's probably not going to be wearing her own shoes, she wears, you know, seven hundred and fifteen hundred dollars shoes. She's going to price them right for everybody else between seventy and one hundred and forty dollars. And boots are going to be in the two hundred and twenty five dollar price range. But as cute shoes go, Jen knows shoes. Jen score. Are they going to go up to size 11, Jen? You know, it's only right that they do at least 11. You should maybe even do a 12 because you do have 2 and 3X in your clothing line. So clearly you embrace the big girl thing, but you've got to embrace the big foot too. And Jessica Simpson's got her Jessica Simpson collection of clothing coming out in uh, department stores in the fall. These clothes are going to be 59 to 79 bucks. Jeez. I can only imagine how one wash and they're over. I don't know. I mean, maybe not. She's going to have um, jeans, skirts, overalls, and jackets. Hillbilly clothes. You know what I mean? I'm not wearing them. I would check out J-Lo shoes, though. Just, you know, to see what's going on with them. Dear Wendy, I just want to congratulate you on an extraordinary radio show. You make the jagged, li- you make the jagged little pill c- called Work Go Fast. You are a fag in a woman's body, and I love you for it. What is your best attribute? In my opinion, it's your ability to laugh at yourself without minimizing the fact that you are still truly a diva. Keep dishing diva, diva, and hey. But apparently it's not. They're fighting over their kid, Roan. You know, they adopted the little boy. He's five now. Listen how sloppy this custody is. She has him for three weeks in L.A., and then they sent a nanny with him in a private jet up to um, up to San Francisco where wow. Phil is running like the San Francisco wow. Chronicle or whatever, her ex-husband. Wow. And the baby, uh, Roan, stays for three weeks with Phil and then flies back in the private jet with the nanny down wow. the coast to L.A., back and forth, back and forth. And nobody's relenting. He wants full custody. I, you know, I mean, for the most part, I always say, you know, Men, do, men really don't want full custody. That's just the way of them, you know, trying to trying to hurt a woman's feelings. You know what I mean? You know, let's get at her, with, you know, by getting at the kids. But he's saying he wants full custody. He's saying, he, this Phil Bronstein is saying that Sharon Stone's life is way too unstable. Well, no, not really. She's not doing any movies. Well, I mean, what is she doing? Besides walking around and looking great. Oh, yeah, she looks good. Oh, yeah. Her boyfriend just broke up with her, though. <clears throat> uh, but so she's back on the stroll. Anyway, their 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 divorce is not. Um, their I say all that to say their divorce is not finalized. You know. Um, WBLS, everybody. I have a telephone number to give you. Are you at all um, interested? I know that you're interested. But what I'm asking you is, do you have any money left after giving to the tsunami? And I, there's so much giving going on. Isn't so, there's so much? Not to mention, it was the holidays. Like you're buying your loved ones gifts, and then all of a sudden the tsunami. And before the holidays, it was Haiti. Did you give to Haiti? I think people are more people are giving to the tsunami than Haiti. Doesn't it seem that way? Like shout out to everybody. You know the Haitian massive listening right now. Um, first. The holidays. 
you know, and your pockets were drained because it's expensive out here. Then the tsunami happened, happened, and you had whatever money you had left over from the holidays, if you had any to give. If you have any money left over between the holidays and the tsunami, and I know we're all interested in this. It's just a matter of, you know, what we're going to give. Um, WBLS has joined in supporting the wash, the um, the Washington, D.C. Martin Luther King National Memorial Foundation in building a monument for the Reverend Dr. King in Washington, D.C. I haven't been to Washington, D.C. in so long, but I also did not realize there is no monument to, to Reverend Dr. King in D.C. Are you surprised by that? I mean, just a little, are, are you a little surprised by that? Well, this Monday, you can start calling with your pledges. And I'm going to give you a website and I'm going to give you a telephone number. Remember, everything's tax deductible. It's 888-4-THE-DREAM. The number four and then the dream. 888-4-THE-DREAM. Or you can go on to um, this website, buildthedream.org. Buildthedream.org. <laughs> Keeping the dream alive. Today's R&B and classic soul in the Wendy Williams experience. 107.5 WBLS. Oh, yeah. Feels so good. Um, Dear Wendy, how you doing? My name is Nate. The web manager over at davidz.com. And I wanted to say I love your show. Oh, these are the people who gave me. Okay, you know what I got today? I got these, um, apparently for the Sundance Film Festival. They're making um, some special Uggs and they're gray. And so I have this note here to shout out to David Nate. Thank you, um, thank you Nate over at davidz.com. Thank you very much for, for um, the collector's Uggs. Because, you know, I'm one that believes Uggs will never go out of style. The fashionistas will tell you, oh, Uggs are over or whatever. Eh, no. There is no such thing as comfort being over. What are my top stories today? I, to- I We had so much going on here on the show. All of a sudden, I don't see China as a top story. I don't feel like rehashing. Do you want to rehash a little bit of it, though? Here, put the CD in. Just listen to how the interview first started. I just put the put the first one in. Yeah, I, we taped it. Just for the bonus hour. So, you know what? No, never mind. It's time to go. Yeah, we'll do a best of show. I don't plan on taking off anytime soon, but, you know, probably next month. No, I don't want to play anything. We'll just save it. China, thanks for coming in. Everybody, thanks so much for listening today. Have a splendiferous weekend. How much more time do I realistically have on this break? Because maybe I can fight. Oh, about two minutes? Okay, now. I'm going home to my leftover chicken noodle soup with no hawk. (laughs) Oh, boy. You all be safe out there this weekend. Shout out to everybody in the traffic. I'm about to join you. The Vaughn Harper Quiet Storm is coming up next. Don't forget all weekend. we got some great programming here at WBLS, including the legendary Hal Jackson and the lovely Debbie B. And they do the Sunday classics. Um, you know, still here as usual, still working the buttons with some songs that you say, oh, damn, I forgot all about this song. You know what I mean? Still making you snap your neck. It's Hal Jackson on Sundays and Debbie B. <laughs> and um, then you start your weekday off the right way. The, the um, um, a PM in the AM, Paul Mooney, right? And then you go to a demo who's been sick, but hopefully he'll be, hey, Mo, hopefully he'll be back on Monday. And then it's the Wendy Williams experience from two to seven, you know, and then Vaughn Harper and then into Champagne. So, you know, here we are. Thank you for being here. 107.5 WBLS. Like I said, I love you for listening today and we'll speak on Monday. Bye. Peace party, people. <laughs> See you later. Cause I'm saying bye-bye. Good night. Program complete. 107.5 WBLS, New York. She's a mother. Hey, Mommy. Happy so good. Here. Uh-oh. Oh, don't drop it on the floor. Germs. She's crafty. I know how to paint. I can sew. I do a little cooking. She's a singer. Struggle. In and out. Ups and downs. Uh, put that where? Back there. 
She drops it like it's hot. Brown juice in one hand and get right in the other. She has Tourette's moments. Although I do have to be honest with you, the last time that I went, um, Dame Dash! What did that have to do with anything? She spazzes out. No, you didn't tear up your 40-something-year-old body! No! She's gangster. Anybody who tries to get in the way is going to get rolled over. She's the queen of all media. Wendy Williams. Since you've been listening this far, we're going to throw in a little bonus hour. You ready? How long is this bonus hour going to last? I'm getting addicted. No, let me tell you. I love, love, love this extra hour. Everything is organic here on the bonus hour. Yeah, baby. Hey, yo, check this out. Wendy, man. Here it is. It's the bonus hour on the Wendy Williams Experience. 107.5 WBLS New York. We are seven acknowledged wonders of the world. You are about to be entertained by the eight, the young man who has become a legend in his own time. It's the Frankie Crocker Show. Do it, Frankie. Do it, do it. <sighs> Suck it to me, mama. Good evening, New York. This is the show that's bound to put more dips in your hips, more cut in your strut, and more glide in your stride. If you don't dig it, you know you've got a hole in your soul. And you don't eat chicken on Sunday. Tall, tan, young, and fly. Anytime you want me, baby, reach out for me. I'm your guy. Just as good to you as it is for you. <laughs> you get so much with the Frankie Crocker touch after all. How could you lose with the stuff I use? Tall and tender for the feminine gender. Anytime you want me, you got it. You know, they call me wax paper because I rap on anything. Call me aluminum foil because my rap is so strong. <laughs> and when it gets good to them, they call me candy paper because the rap is definitely sweet. <laughs> Sock it to me, mama. But be cool on girl. Don't let your eyes and your ears get your mind so messed up your heart desires something your body just can't stand. Hello, New York. Mm -mm -mm. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest men to crack the mic in New York and worldwide, Frankie Crocker. I am now holding down his shift and... I always feel his presence in the room, some way, shape, or form. Grew up listening to that man on the radio. Had the pleasure of meeting him out socially um, a few times, but uh, never having a radio, radio, radio conversation with him. One of the things that I, I missed out on. You know, I never, I never had a chance to, uh, you know, sit down and really chop it up about the booze, so to speak, with him. And I would be um, irresponsible if I didn't acknowledge one of my forefathers, Frankie Crocker. <clears throat> Jim used to be his engineer. Jim, you were his engineer. Would you care to share a story? Please step to the mic. Jim Wiener, everybody. <laughs> WBLS Engineering. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was uh, Frankie, as you put it, was really uh, one of the, uh, the giants of uh, radio. And I think he had a tremendous influence on the music yes. business as well. Yes. And what he managed to do, uh, both as... A personality, mm -hmm. and as a program director, mm -hmm. I think was absolutely monumental. Now, right. you were in the studio with him every day. You pressed his buttons. I, you? yes. I, I, uh, you did for him what Goose and Hollywood yes. do for me. Yes, for, for, an, uh, for a number of years. There were other engineers also who, did a, you know, who, uh, who worked with him. In uh, and out. In and out. How many and years did you them. do it? It was over a span of 23 years wow. that I worked with him. It, now, not for all of that time, but for a, for a, a, a pretty good chunk of well, that time. So I know that um, Hollywood and, and Artie, he's in here every day, and Goose, they are privy to a lot of my idiosyncrasies and crazy nuttiness when the microphone goes off. You know, a lot goes on here in the studio. We have a lot of nice conversations and a lot of Tourette's conversations, crazy <laughs> bipolar moments. <laughs> You know, uh, that they are privy to. Did you get a chance to see Frankie uh, behind actually, the mic spazzing out? Actually, that's, that's, a, that's an interesting question because the way the arrangement is, uh, at, 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 as you just said now, 
is that the engineers and the other staff that work with you were in the same room with you. The way it was set up when, when Frankie worked... They were in the other room. He was in the other room, That's and right. I was at the controls in a separate room. See, Not that, that Frankie was unfriendly, it's just the, the nature of what he had to do. No, and the nature no of what feasible. he had to do, he was a big star, and so he was like royalty. Me, I, have, I got these squabboos well, in the same room with me. I can never have a <laughs> damn private moment. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, I can't fart I, without them being in here with the, with the lo- matches. <laughs> you know, I went, I went, now, now, Jim, you and, and um, Sanchez and you all are the captains of the new studio. That's the Wendy Williams, Steve Harvey studio right here behind me. The room is now cleared of the old equipment. That's right. There's a lot of engineering going on regarding the new equipment. Me and Steve are meeting how we want our guests to be placed, the microphones and whatnot. You all are doing a great job. And BLS, mm-hmm. and shout out to all the management here. And you, Vinnie Brown, thank you so much for this new studio. It's going to be fabulous. But what you're doing is you got the the engine the splaboos are still in the room with us. <laughs> you mean in, you mean in the yes, studio? Yes, yes. Can we uh, you know can we get a private moment? <laughs> Well, that's a that would have to be a management decision. I'm not I'm not management. I'm just staff. See, so, that's that's why Frankie was such an incredible so. jock. <laughs> Do you know that everybody it was Frankie's idea to put the W on its side here at WBLS, and that is the logo that you see racing around town on our vehicles, and on TV and billboards and whatnot. That was Frankie's idea because he was a little quirky and a little different. As yeah. most creative people are. Yeah, he he really did things that to this day sometimes we, we t- I, well I, I take for granted certain things just as like what you uh, just mentioned, and then I uh, realize when I think about it that a lot of things that are around today are around because of what uh, what Frankie uh, Crocker had instituted. Yes, and he really had a uh, tremendous imagination. Really respected the potential of radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, as a medium where the lack of the visual dimension was a was a plus yes. by by because he would draw a picture in your right, mind right and yes. uh, he really I mean he could say some very remember the Frankie Crocker bubble bath yes how he would yes, bubble exactly. up that water I'd be listening in New Jersey a young Wendy just you know I visualize you know I. That's the, one of the great things that I love about radio. You know, TV gives it to you straight. It leaves you no room to develop your imagination. Here on radio, we can draw a picture for you. And Frankie was one of the greatest at that. Absolutely. He, uh, mm-hmm. he, he could say many uh, very profound things mm-hmm. and also many very hilarious things. And he, he had and a terrific, he, he had terrific qu- wit. Quite a bev- bevy of beauties. Now, were you ever privy to Raquel Welsh and the like coming up and returning apartment keys and... What well, not? no, I can't say. Because you were, were in the other room. The, yes, yes. Was, so it, that, was there a blind? Say, because I can no, picture my actually, friend. No. Have, no blind? Oh, see, no, that's the quirkiness no, of me. There was, see, I there would was, have had a blind. Yeah, there, I, I, I could always see in the room. Oh, Frank, I could always see in my room. Uh, but there were many, many very attractive individuals that, that of all did shades frequently. Of the sp- <laughs> spectrum. Well, yes. Black, yes, white, yes. light skin, dark right. skin, Hispanic. Right. Right, mm-hmm. and, and as a matter of fact, <laughs> it, as is sometimes mentioned, um, uh, Frankie, uh, as we sometimes kid, around, uh, uh, kid here, Frankie's imagination sometimes described, uh, he used his imagination to describe what I was wearing. Yes. Actually, and very often it involved... Uh, a dress? Yes, I, I would say that most, most often it involved the, the core element was a dress and, and some stilettos and, and so yes and yes some, yes ab- absolutely absolutely and um often i think about mm-hmm. myself i imagine myself as a tranny and, yes yes and, <laughs> and you know i i sometimes think to myself well perhaps who knows if i had been a tranny a tranny mm-hmm and was working because uh, because actually not that there's anything wrong with that but I just happened not to be and Frankie just did this to kid around but let's say I was a tranny yes and let's say there I was working in the in the control room yes would Frankie I often wondered to myself describe me as as somebody when he was kidding around always wearing pants oh yes yeah y- yes the opposite of what you would have right. been if you were right. a beautiful transvestite he would describe you as a heterosexual man yes. That's the what? engineering stylings of Jim Weiner, ladies okay. and gentlemen. And I'll just quickly say that, uh, yes, I, I really appreciate that uh, having worked with Frankie for so long. I really appreciate your tribute to him because all kidding aside, he really was a uh, not only a tremendous professional yes. in what he did, but he really was uh, a great person now, uh, to work with personally. Did he enjoy drinking fine champagne on the air like I do? Well, uh, I'm not suggesting that anybody here 
ever imbibes alcoholic beverages while on the air. Oh, certainly not. <laughs> no. But I think he appreciated, yes. as you do, mm -hmm. the finer things in life. Yes. Thank you, Jim. Thank, thank you. you. Here's to you, Frankie Crocker. We miss you. We love you. Thank you for laying the blueprint. And Jim, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now let's bring in our guest. J.J. Walker is on his way in. Jimmy Walker is in town, everybody. We had such a packed show for the four hours that um, unfortunately we could not fit him in. He stood us up yesterday, although I understand it wasn't an actual stand-up. His people couldn't get in touch with my people who can... I see, I hate the whole people thing. This is the part of, I need to control my own life. But I, but I can't. Oh, no. One of the interns, open the doors. I like to see him walk the runway. No, somebody keep the door open. Uh, hey! Yeah, keep the door open. Oh. Uh-oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Jimmy Walker, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hello, how are you? Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, have a seat. Put your bag up. Oh, don't put it on the floor. We sometimes get, yeah, mm -hmm, you don't oh, want to take anything back with you. It's that big, huh? <laughs> wow. I've never seen any, but I, I, it's always in my imagination. <laughs> you ever go to somebody's house and, uh, oh, never mind. Nobody ever invites me to house. Yes. So listen. It's very nice to meet you. Very nice to have you here. Well, thank you guys for having me. Thank you for taking the time to bring me on on the big show. Yes. Now, from what I understand, you were supposed to come yesterday. There was some cross with people. Uh, see, I, did, I didn't even know. Two other people called me and said, you know, you're supposed to be on this show now. Yes. And I go, really? So I was sleeping at the time. Yes, yes, yes. So now, where know. do you call home now? Well, I'm really such a road comic. I'm really on the road most of the time. Mm -hmm. So I really don't really spend time in too many places. I just keep trucking. Well, you know? do, you, do you pay uh, a, a rent at a particular place? No. A mortgage or something? I have one mortgage, and that's in Vegas. Okay, so then that's so, where we'll call yeah, home? Yeah, we'll call Vegas home. That's where you keep your awards and... and no, <laughs> no awards, no nothing. Uh, usually just hate mail goes there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let the hate mail go there. Uh, Jimmy Walker, everyone, for those of you who want to know, is in town. Four shows all Four together. Four shows. It's very rare that I'm in New York to do my thing. Usually... Why is that? I'm not one of those guys. I'm not one of those kind of comics. I, I, I'm I'm the road guy. When they, when they look for guys, they go, hey, let's get Dave Chappelle, that'll be great. They go, can't get Chappelle. Oh, okay. Then we'll get Chris Rock. No, no Chris Rock? Ooh. How about Sinbad? No, oh. no, no. Sinbad. Mike, how about Mark Curry? He's funny. Bring him in. Wow. And then, they, and then they finally start going out. Well, we can't get Chris Rock. Look at Tony Rock. Oh. Wow, you gotta Wait, be kidding uh, me. Uh, but how about Charlie Murphy? Oh shoot. How about Kevin Hart? He's funny. Uh oh, uh oh. How about Patrice McDonald. Uh -oh. He's, oh. he's a little rough. Uh -oh. But I don't know. Uh oh, you're off the map now. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. And finally, they uh -oh. go, well, you know, that JJ guy. Oh, wow. Get that alive. <laughs> yeah. So, so when it's a big market like this, yes. they never, they never get to me. The <laughs> they never get to me. Is, is this microphone still sufficiently on? Arts Kid Dynamite, I think, blew out Jimmy's microphone. Now, now listen, sorry. how old are you now, if you don't old, mind me asking? Old. Are you between 55 and 60? Yes. Are you between 60 and 65? Yes. Stop asking so many questions, Thelma. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> go, 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 <sighs> Ralph Carter. Yes. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, is Ralph Carter, what, what, uh, did he ever bring girls around the set? Oh. Even, even back then? I mean, you know, because. Well, Ralph, you got to remember, kids are kids. He was a kid. When right. He was, on our show. he was never an adult. So he was with his family doing whatever they do. But by the time um, Good Times ended, Ralph. He was still a kid. How old was he about? Like, he was very like young. He was big in New York here. He uh, he was on, on Broadway with that play, Pearly. Right. And that he did when he was like 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting to show you the plight of many of the black actors in those days. We couldn't get Ralph. Norman Lear couldn't get Ralph because Pearly was a big hit on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to get Ralph. They couldn't get Ralph. So they said, 
when we were doing the pilot stuff, it wasn't the pilot, but the first couple of episodes, mm-hmm. they said, well, let's get somebody else to do that role just in case we can't buy the contract out. Okay, okay. So they got somebody else to do the role, and the guy did the role, and he was fabulous. There was uh, absolutely no problem at all. He uh, played the kid, and he was the son, and he was great. Mm-hmm. And finally, just before it went to air... They got Ralph. They bought him out of his contract. They bought him out of his contract. Well, the guy they had, and we had to reshoot it, was Lawrence Fishburne. Wow. Who knew? And Lawrence Fishburne was a little kid then. And, and I always say to Lawrence when I see him, I said, do you know how your life would have changed yeah. forever? You never have this credibility. Now he's Othello. Right. He's a big time, legit actor. Right, said, right. You'd have never had that if you did. And he was so crushed. Do you do you um, find that because you you know you did such a great role as JJ that now that people have you pigeonholed as that role? Um, oh, without a doubt. I mean, I'm not an actor anyway. Are you upset about that? No. Well, I was never an actor. I was you know always. A comic. Uh, and, you know, I've been doing comedy and radio for like 15 years before that. Oh. So it really didn't bother me that I, I never really worked as an actor because I don't have the chops. Yes, I got you. You, I, you know, if, uh, you know, I think that you heard Will Smith until recently say, I can't do that role. I don't have the chops. I was much in that category. Yes. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I can do that character when it's necessary, but that's that's about it. I don't have much range. You had some success with the Love Boat. I remember I used to see you as, as JJ, pretty right. much. Oh, that, if they if you they drove the fly. You, you drove the fly van on yeah, the love if they, boat. If they, if they cast you, they're going to cast. They're going to get a guy in to do the dynamite thing, or yeah. talk about the old days, or whatever. Nobody's going to say, "Hey, wait a minute, Jimmy Walker's Hamlet." That's a great idea. <laughs> now, Witherspoon <laughs> said that you don't like um, be- reliving the kid dynamite, some of the isms Spoon's that you have from the wrong. show. wrong. Don't listen to Spoon. Can you give me a, uh, ow, uh, kid dynamite. No, we don't do it, but oh, I mean, okay. don't listen to Spoon. He made it sound so, like you jump up oh, and. Oh, no, no, no. Spoon is fibbing. Don't listen to him at all. He's, he's fibbling. Even though he's my man, though, don't listen to Spoon. Are you friends with Eddie Murphy and them? Uh, I know Murphy, but you know you got to remember it's a different era. I yes, go back to the prior era. Yes, I'm with Pryor uh-huh. and Cos and those kind of guys mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. I go back to the pre Lenny Bruce era. Yes. So I'm I'm way back in the '60s. See, I I was a house MC at the Apollo during the '60s for like four years. Oh. I worked with the Last Poets. Who knew? For like five years, so I know all those cats. Mm. That's what I, I my era was the '60s and '70s and and that kind of comedy. And then coming with the Richard thing, you know, I when Richard used to live here, I knew all of his wives, girlfriends, whatever. Yes, yes. And it was a whole different thing. And we and see our era was the first era in terms of first on television we would watch Ed Sullivan and people used to come home and go, Hey, color people on T V tonight, man. Let's go stay home. Yes. You know Exactly, <laughs> of course. That was in the old days. We all grew up on that. <laughs> and then uh, I always tell the story of Richard with the Melvin Van Peoples thing. No, it's, it's, tell uh, that. Yeah. Richard, we went to see this movie. It was the first black movie ever. I mean, it was like, in, in, people couldn't sweet, sweet, max, badass song. Right. People could not believe it. And Richard was so struck by it. We went to see it like on 42nd or 43rd mm-hmm. Street. He stayed for two days and watched it. Wow. He could not stop watching. And I say, hey, Richard, I got I got to go. Yeah. <laughs> be watching this thing all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he just he just thought it was the most fascinating thing that a guy, Melvin Van People Senior, right. was able to get this whole thing going. Get the funding and the and the, the whole, whole the whole, the whole thing. thing. Yeah. Now James was killed off of good times. I mean, if the, the story goes is because um the actor who played James, uh, John John Amos, thought he was the star of the show. It now did he ever come and talk to you about it? Or did you at any point think, you're the star of Good Times? Maybe I I'm leaving? I never really thought, in terms of the show, yes, because I was involved in other things. Oh, you were doing stand-up. I was doing stand-up. And, and getting big money, I'm well, sure, at no, that time. Never getting big money. Still, it remains the same thing till today. Oh. <laughs> oh. Never big money, but I was opening. Because in those days, there was no such thing as a headline comic like we have now. So I was opening act for Donna Summer and Gladys. Oh. So I was on the road every week, you know, and and the interesting thing, I mean, because it goes back before most of your audience knows who Donna Summer is, but the interesting thing is she was so hot, it never really felt like, oh, gee, people are coming to see you because they would say, all right, get out there and do 15 minutes. And people were so 
psyched. Yes. To see Donna. I mean, it was, uh, you know. Yeah, the but they were psyched to see you, too. No. You'd be out there, and you'd be in front of the thing, in front of the curtain. No. And then you start hearing the band start tuning up. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You go, I'm still here. <laughs> and you just hear that swell from the crowd when they heard their first gong thing coming yes. through. And people go, ah. Yes. But yes. she was drawing like 5,000 people. Of course, of course. And it's it was summer. interesting because in the trades, when she go on a summer tour, they would just put out, Donna Summer is now available for dates. Please call. Wow. And that would be it. Cause uh, Joyce Bogart. And that was the end of it. Yeah. So th there was no, like, booking deal. Were you ever blacklisted from TV? No. no. Blacklisted from the cruise lines, though. They just threw me off. What, because you did Love Boat? No. Tell me why. They threw me off because I did some George Bush jokes. Oh. So they said well, then they this is recent. Yeah, this, <clears throat> is re this was in the last year. Because I'm, I was getting ready to ask you, uh, after that question, what, what type of... What, do you curse? Do you use oh, the no, N-word? Do you I, use I, the F-word? No, no. See, that, that makes me different oh. in terms of... I've never been a dirty act. I never could be a dirty act. Uh -huh. It never, you know, a mature act. You know, you got all the guys now because of Richard. Right. You know, which I always bring on Paul Mooney. Because mm. Mooney really led Richard. People, you know, Mooney was the guy who put all that together. Right. He jo wrote jokes he, for him. He was the guy who, who kept Richard together, mm -hmm. made sure he had an organization. Mm -hmm. He listened to every set. Because yes. Richard would do two hours. Yes. And Richard didn't know what he said. Yeah. And so... Mooney would say, here's what you said, here's the way to do it, put it together. So, but, but Mooney was doing that in the 60s. Right, right, you right. Know, when we were way back then. Right. So <clears throat> I was always clean because I was a guy who wanted to do Johnny Carson. Okay. And that was, that was the goal at the time. Now, those days are over. Since mm -hmm. Death Jam and everything, that's completely changed. Right. But I haven't changed my style. So therefore, I'm the old school style because I've always written to my writer, the reason I'm a clean act is because people have seen me on TV and they bring their moms yes. and they bring their little kids. Yes. And I'm kind of And you never just say F them? No. No, oh, not at all. Okay. Because when you did Johnny Carson in the old days, they would funny. not allow that. You had to be funny without you, the curses. You had to be funny without Which the Which is actually curses. more creative. But... That's the style now. Yes. I'm out of style. Yes. I'll be the first one to say that. I'm out of style. Now, I'm Steve Harvey the... does the morning show here at WBLS. I know Steve. Now, Steve, you know, you heard his feelings back. He's, he said he was a 15-year-old kid. He told me this story earlier. Steve, I hope you're listening. You didn't say I couldn't tell this story, so I am. Oh, tell well. me story. So he says that he uh, took off from school. Saved up all of his money. He did. Climbed fences, had a fake ID, the whole bit, dressed up like a man, even though he's like this 15-year-old <laughs> kid. To see you, I forgot what city, like Cincinnati or someplace obscure. They wouldn't let him in because he wasn't old enough. So he climbed the fence and waited outside in the back where he knew you were coming out. He says to you, you know, you know, he's holding, he's by himself. Travel light, travel far. <laughs> he had his pen and his paper. He's like, Jimmy Walker, you know, you're such an inspiration to me. Can you please sign my <laughs> That's autograph? A sad commentary. And you said something to the effect of, get the F away from me, kid. <laughs> and you hurt that, his feelings. That sounds wild, because I don't think I would ever do that. But if I did do that, then I did do that. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm sorry because I don't know what happened. Were you high? No, I don't do drugs. Did you ever? Drugs. No. Because you got to remember. Cruel I, and sober. Now that takes guts. <laughs> Cruel and sober. Because you got to remember the era I came in. Yes. You know, first of all, we we grew up on Lenny Bruce and Freddie Prince. Right. Who was a very good friend of So you had a lot of people that died. Right. And then later on you had Richard and Sam Kennison yes, and Dice. Yes, And you would see the headlines in the paper. These guys are the Antichrist. Right. You know, but again, it came because of the Carson thing. At that time, Carson was a big deal. And you wanted to be clean? I wanted to be on Carson. That yes. was my goal in life. You wanted to be clean? And you everybody to was trying to do Sullivan. Yeah, and you but had several uh, visits on Carson. The, the interesting thing thing is people think I did Carson I did a lot of Johnny Carson shows but I always did it with a guest host I was on the B list oh. never on the A list and I was always trying to oh. get on the on the A list and I could never ever get there my friend David Brenner would yes. do the show all the time and I would say Brenner you gotta make a call you gotta get me and he says man I don't know what happened but man they they ain't putting you on that A-list. Okay, <laughs> so who do you love today? Speaking of D-list, do you love Kathy Griffin or you know? Kathy Griffin is interesting, and I think it works for whatever it is. Yeah. And she's made a career out of it. I never even put anybody down yeah. for stuff that they do. They yeah. do something great. Whatever level it gotcha. is, roll with it. Gotcha. You know, it goes from what you do or what Stern does right. all the way to what Kathy Griffin does. Right. If that works, do it. Yes. Now, let's talk about your personal life. Have you ever been married? 
It's, wow. it's Jimmy JJ here, everybody. <laughs> no, nobody's ever asked me in that sort Do of Do you have children? None that have showed up. So that's always good. So you you live you live your existence for you. Yes, I'm a road guy. I do road comedy. That's it. I go from town to town doing my little jokes. That's it. That's Who do you love, Jimmy? <laughs> you know, at this stage, I mean, the you, holidays are coming. The holiday, Jimmy. See, I don't even I don't even celebrate the holidays. I, I'm one of those guys. Jimmy, I never, you're, no, you're nearing AARP. Who's I'm way change beyond the AARP. Who's I'm just change the, the bedpans. <laughs> Who's gonna? I mean, uh, uh, do- nobody. That's it. It's it's the old. Uh, uh, I I give the credit to David Foster, but a lot of people have taken credit for the line. David Foster, as you know, big time producer, Earth, Wind, and Fire, right. Barbara Streisand, and everything. And some other people claim the line too, but I give it to David Foster. And they said because he's in the studio like a hundred hours a week. Yes. And they said, man, you're in the studio a lot. How, how do you know what the style is? Yes. And he says, I am the style. Okay. <laughs> so you are the center of your universe. <laughs> yes. Yes. Does it ever get lonely during the holidays? No, no, no. I, I'm I'm just the opposite of everyone else. Everybody else is complaining about family. Yes, this, yes, yes, yes. But see, when you go out with girls and do whatever, you find out they all hate their families. Yes. They all hate their ex-husbands. How old are these girls? What are they, like 22? <laughs> no, I... Big, I, big I, breast I, implants? No, oh, no, no, no. White? No, no, okay. no, no. I don't even really... See, I would never go out with a 22-year-old. That would be not good for me. What's what's your age range? 40 plus? 50 yeah, 40 plus? 40 plus. Have to be 40 and 50 in good shape. Held with no together. Kids. Yeah. With no kids. No, no kids. Because then you'll have to hear about the ex-husband. And then because the guy is a moron and he has a kid. And then he won't pay the money. And he's got a new girlfriend who's 11. And they hate him. Yes. And the kids, she, she turned the kids against him. No, wait a minute. He turned the kids against her. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> Hmm. When's the last time you had sex? Oh! Well, it could have been recently. Uh-oh. you got to remember, I am a road comic. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> so those things do happen. Uh, yes. Yes. Those but, things. That, but that's like, that's just a vessel that you're filling temporarily. Well, that's sex. You said sex. You didn't say love. You said sex. Oh. I'm l- turning you on the literal dial. Oh. <laughs> I don't like it for you. <laughs> oh, I'm a woman. I'm sorry. You know, I'm a little bit softer and pinker. You know, we. You know, oh, I don't like, want to go there. Gosh. The pink part. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even go there. Never, I left that alone. You ever been hit on by a man? Oh no, I don't get hit on by women. It's always a battle. Oh, it's a battle with women. I mean, oh. My thing is with women. They know within the first two minutes whatever's going to happen. So yes. you know, say whatever you're going to say. Don't come up with any fancy lines. Yes. Stand there and go, hi, hello. How you and doing? then if they if they don't dig you, it's over. You wow. can never talk a woman into it. You can talk yourself out of it. Yeah. But you can't talk yourself into it. Oh, wow. <laughs> if they don't like you, you're done. If they like you, you got to be a complete moron. That thing is, don't say anything stupid. Yes. You got it. <laughs> there's co- there's tragedy in your comedy. There's tragedy in my life. Oh! <laughs> but, I, but I deal with it. That's the way it is. Are you a wealthy man? No. Financially? No, not at all. I'm a road comic. I do I do my soul jams with the stylistics and the Delphonics. I do my body it's whatever tour with Johnny Gill and those guys. Oh, you Johnny doing? Gill. Okay, now here we go on something. Johnny Gill and Eddie Murphy. What do you know? I know nothing. All right. I know absolutely nothing. I, I work with Johnny. He's a very nice guy. Okay, we like him too. Yes. Yes. That's it. I have no problems with Johnny Gill. Yes. Now, I want to find out from you about the other ca- the other members of the cast. Did you go to Florence's, uh, uh, Florida Evans, um, gosh. <laughs> Esther Roll. Esther Roll's funeral. No, I did not. Why? Why? I think either I had just heard about it or I was working. Yeah. One of the two. And did you send flowers? I did send flowers, actually. Yes. Yes, I did. Did you shed a tear? I don't, I don't shed tears anymore. I've been in this oh. racket too long. <laughs> you are <laughs> bitter. I'm there's not some, bitter. I there's something about you. <laughs> Damn you. You're missing a soul. <laughs> I, I, my, no. soul is, is, <laughs> my soul has been run over at probably uh, O'Hare and... And yeah. Philadelphia Airport, probably, yeah. for the 97th time. Did you ever used to get to Rose with uh, with um, her, on, at, you know, like, who would you fight with the most on the set of Good Times, and who would you get along with the best? The one I got along with the best was Johnny Brown. 
who played Bookman. Bookman. Because Johnny was a comic. Okay. And comics, you know, we are low lives and we all basically get along, even though we attack each other constantly. How old were you when Good Time started? I was in my 30s. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Playing the 18-year-old. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? That's that That's that weight. You know, you were you were such a skinny kid. I mean, you look good now. You oh, put on yeah, a few pounds. You don't pounds. have to say that. The, the, but, so. But but you know you were so thin you were able to pull that off you were in your thirties though yeah I was a, I was in nightclub comedy you got to remember I'd opened for Miles Davis and I'd done the the, the Motown review for like five had you years. ever had sex with your TV sister oh Bernadette was married she was constantly married oh and wow and she's still married to, that's why marriage I, you know that's not my thing yeah. I always see people c constantly trying but they keep failing would she come to the set sometimes you know crying regarding you know the night before or being a comic. People are always complaining. Yes. You don't listen anymore. Yes. You don't hear. People, and you go out with women, and you hear their complaints about their husbands, boyfriends, kids, yes. money. So after a while, you just learn to say, I'm on autopilot. Yes, were you starstruck when, when a Jackson entered the set? Not at all. Not at all. Uh... I don't, I, you know, yeah, I remember Janet Jackson was a little kid. Yes, Penny. I was a ja I was a Michael Jackson fan. Yes. Would Michael and, ever come to the set? The yeah, sister? oh, sure. Oh, sure. They, they, because you have to have an adult and people would bring their kids. And, and sometimes Michael would be the adult to supervise Janet? No, but he would be with his mom. Okay. Or he would be at Reby or uh, LaToya. Would, would, Reby, either... would Reby ever be with another little girl? Oh, wait, no. Janet was too young at that point to have had the daughter. Okay, wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was a conversation previous. Oh, I didn't know about that. Yeah, well, um, neither do we. Uh, <laughs> it's, still, it's still up in the air. So, you and Janet, did you, uh, would you, would you talk to her? Would you no, talk to Michael? Would you talk to kid. Catherine? She's Catherine? A kid. Catherine I would talk to. Very nice lady. She's a uh -huh. Jehovah Witness. No, would she were ever be crying over a row, maybe the night before with Joe? <laughs> no, not at all. She was very happy. And they, and you got to remember the Jacksons had a show on the air then, so she was very happy about that. Yeah. Very busy time in the Jackson Would household. Joe ever show up? No, never saw Joe, but I always tell this story, uh, which is interesting, because I, I like every other comic and every other black comic in America, I do Michael Jackson stuff. So I'm opening for the uh, uh, the Soul Jam thing. Yes. And we're in like a 3,000 seat place, mm -hmm. and I'm doing a thing, and there's people wandering around. There's always people wandering around. So you see, I'm doing my Michael Jackson stuff and killing the crowd, as usual, uh -huh. tremendous laughter. And this people started walking toward the stage. I'm looking out there and I see I said, uh-oh, it's Joe Jackson. And he's angry. Really angry. Very hot. Okay. And screaming all sorts of epithets uh -huh. in my my way and mm -hmm. just limping toward the stage. Mm. So what I did was I grabbed him and I grabbed his hand mm -hmm. and I turned him around to the audience and said, the guy I was just talking to about, the king of pop, well, here's the man who created him, Joe Jackson. He turned it all around. And the crowd started applauding mm -hmm. and he looked at the crowd and he started waving at the crowd, the anger, and yes. he looked back at me just like, you... You mother father. <laughs> yes! That's mm -hmm. a, and, and then... I had the shy lights come back and they go, what you do to Joe Jackson? Mm -hmm. What happened? He's really mad at you. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, wow. <laughs> you leveled him with kindness. That's quick thinking on your he part. He was very angry. Very angry. So you um, you were in a brief, you were a brief movie star at one point. Never a movie star. I don't have the the the, the, the whatever to do it. But I did, I've done films. Uptown Saturday Night? I did Let's Do It Again, which and, was a, okay. uh, which was part of that trilogy yes. and working with the cars yes. and Sydney. Yes. And uh, I was lucky enough to be in that kind of stuff. But I, I'm, I'm such a bad actor. Are I you mean, still close with Cosby? My line on Cosby has always been, if Cosby's not talking, nobody's talking. Oh, man, that means a whole lot. <laughs> Drop a bomb on that. That means... I think, you know, mm. Kaz has proved his point. Yeah. So, therefore, he does pontificate. Uh -huh. But he is a billionaire, so he's the winner. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, he, he, he thinks he knows a lot, and he's proven it. You know, he's had he's had chops to do it in terms of his commercial success. So, you right. don't argue with him. But he continues his uh, bombacity. Mm -hmm. And I like Kaz. I mm -hmm. think he's great. I think he's great. But he's always got to... Get in there. Yeah. He's not the guy who's going to say, hey, what do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> His opinion's got to be heard. <laughs> it got to be heard loudly and constantly. But he's a good cat. I mean, he's all right with me. 
<laughs> so, in conclusion... I'm leaving now. J- yes, you, you've been a fabulous guest. No, I haven't. I've been a, uh, just a peaceful guest. Well, I mean, we talked about your sex life. There's, there's none of that. Oh. <laughs> we, talk, we talked about we talked about your your finances. None of that either. Oh, <laughs> we we talked about your relationships with other people. I have great relationships with my alleged friends. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, and and now we're talking about why you're in town. Jimmy J.J. Walker, the legendary kid, a dynamite! <laughs> oh, yeah. oh. Wow, it sounds like some kind of Arab terrorist. Every you're day legendary to us. I don't know about that. I, I would love to believe that, but I'm not. That When I think of legendary, I think of Cos and, and Fryer and those people. Well, you're and even the great Paul Mooney. You're, well, <laughs> not here. He no, did not I know, do so I know well he was here. banned and thrown out. And, and no, never... he didn't He didn't turn it over. These people who are listening right now were not listening. They, they listen right now. They, they wouldn't listen in the morning. So that's when we got <laughs> oh, fabulous was, well, comic wait a minute. stylings no, of no, 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 Steve no. Harvey. <laughs> Steve Harvey's all right with me. I like Art, Steve Harvey. That's, <laughs> why, that's why he gets you no, on the no, jokes. No, 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 That was a slip of a button. Yeah, then then press yeah, the right yeah, button. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like Steve Harvey. I have nothing against yeah. Steve Harvey. No, he's very funny. Okay. Well, I wish you well. I wish you well. Thank you very much for having me very on the show. Nice Thanks for taking you, the time. Sir. I appreciate Take it. Take care. Bye. Art, keep the door open. Okay. Vinny's groupie eyes in you. Um, Vinny Brown is our boss. Well, Vinny Brown is all right with me. And yes, and you'll go around and say hello to him just before you. I'll leave. go shake hands. Like I'm yes. running for, I'll be like Michael Bloomberg. I'm Bob, for Bob Lee will take you around there. Arthur, you groupie, you'll sit down right here. <laughs> Get your ass back over here. Come on, Art. Hey, we're going to break. You know what time it is? No, hey, you don't need to break. You know what? Art is Art is such a groupie. It is unbelievable. And <laughs> girls, do you all notice that? Yes. That's the very man that hires all the interns and stuff like that. <laughs> Hollywood, do not leave me hanging. It doesn't happen a lot, but there's certain people when they come here, Art's bit, getting his camera out and flicking it up and, you know, abandoning the show to walk around the studio, rides the elevator down to Park Avenue, sees them off in their car service, the whole bit. What does he do? Persia White. Persia White was another one. There's a, there, Johnny, the new edition was other ones. Oh, Yes. Art is a producer, to, is a groupie in disguise. <laughs> Yo, he seemed better, didn't he? <laughs> Yo, that was, it's got to be in the top ten list of the most bitter. Yep, that's his theme song. Yup, yup, yup. But you want to know what? That's that comedy tragedy thing that makes comedians great. Yup. Yeah, yeah. And you all, we're going to ride you out on the Jimmy Walker theme song. We're going to a break. And we'll be back on 107.5 WBLS. Hey, what's up? This is Rolanda Watts, and you're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Aren't you lucky? WBLS. You're calling number 10. Oh, my God. Guess what? <laughs> you just picked up your share of the money. You just picked up $1,000. I got to pull over, girl. I'm driving. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You could be our next winner. Well, I'm glad that we've made life a little easier for you, Bert. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Let everybody know the only radio station with the $107,000 cash guarantee. I love 107.5 WBLS. Yeah. One. What's up? I'm Tierra Marie, and you're listening to the bonus hour on 107.5 WBLS. Ladies and gentlemen, the Nildy Little is in the building. Oh. Yay! Oh. Hey, the Nildy. Oh. Nice to have you here. If I smell a little fishy. I just had some champagne. So I mean, some. Um, it's Isaac, Miss Isaac. What, Miss Rahi? Ms. Oh, no, no, no. That perfume you have on. No, it's sunflowers. Oh, it's very Cheapy nice. from the CVS. It's very nice. You know, sometimes you don't have to pay a lot for the little things in life, right? I do know that. I'm thinking about doing a little, like, newsletter on all the great things you can get and not spend a lot of money. Like what? Pull, pull up am, your microphone. I am a queen of sample sales, yes. discounters, right. vintage, yes. rummage sales, uh-huh. cashmere coat from... Um, Fifth Avenue, uh, what's that church? Church of the Heavenly Rest, $25. Wow. See? 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 Everybody, don't trick up all your I money. Want that, I want that hat. 
I heard uh, you talking about it. Can I try it on? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> exactly. I would have it on right now, but okay. let me fit over my headphones. My best friend was here from L.A. just a few days ago, and I pointed one of these out. She says, why? And I'm like... Oh, because they're dude, fabulous. Dude, isn't it fabulous? They're fabulous. And you, you can't wear them. Everybody, she's talking about my trapper hat. You oh, can't wear them it. with... Like, like what you have on now is perfect. Right, you can't you wear it with too much coatage right, and all that. Right, that's like, that's this right. is it. This is vintage right, Norma like Kamali. That. Yeah. This is it. Just this Love sweater. You look fabulous. Look at you. Thank you. That looks so good. That, I'm going to live. <laughs> oh, yes. That, I'm going to no, live. No, I had one of those little scares. I know. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little cancer scare. It happens. Mm -hmm. It happens. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about you. Benilde Little is here, everybody. And you know what? She's written a bunch of novels. Mm -hmm. But her most recent one, and I'll, I'll, I'll repeat the ones that she's written. Good Hair, yeah. The Itch, and Acting Out. Right. But your most recent one, which was just released last spring, mm -hmm. is called... Who does she think she is? And it's about three women and their friendships and the, their friends in the book? No, their mother, daughter, granddaughter. Okay, so, so, okay, and their relationships with each other and the things that they had to sacrifice for love. Right, right. What what it is, it looks at uh, the, the Aisha, the main character, uh -huh. a young girl, 26 years old, is getting married. And she's about to marry into a very wealthy white family. And it's really about the family's reaction because I think the sort of larger These culture, are black people. These are yeah, black, Aisha. you know, sort of well-to-do yeah. folks um, from Jersey. Right. Um, and, you know, I think the assumption is that we all want to marry in to white whiteness. And that's just not true. I know where you come from. I know where I come from. And that's not true. Yeah. Well, well, you know what? I think a lot of people that I grew up with probably assumed that, you know, I would marry, you know, yeah. a lot of the white kids that I went to school right. with. Right, right. But uh, that wasn't my, that wasn't my flavor. Right. I mean, great for friends and stuff like right. that. But my right. father, it, you know, he never did anything wrong to make me hate black men. And my exactly. brother, my uncles, my, you know, and I just, I, I. My best gr girlfriend, though, from Ocean Township, Regina, she married right. um, her college right. sweetheart, who right. is white. Right, right. But generally, I wanted to look at, like, you know, sort of how we respond to that. Um, and also the mother, the grandmother, and their choices. The, the grandmother actually married a jazz musician, like, ditched the sort of proper black dentist right. for the jazz musician. Right. So back in the day, that was a big, even now, for some people, that right. was a big thing to mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Um, so it's really about, you know, we're talking about Cheryl Swoops a minute ago. It's about choices, and people have to live honestly. Otherwise, it's really painful. I don't know how you do it. How yeah. you don't live honestly. in an honest way. Yeah. Well... Benildi, by the way, is a black woman because people are going to be wondering. Um, and also, Benildi is the former senior editor at Essence Magazine. She was a contributing editor at Heart and Soul. You really got a heavy background. Yeah. Uh, she's I've been around a long time. She's written for InStyle, Allure, and other magazines. Now you're a full-time novelist, you're married, and you have a daughter. And a son. And a son. How old is your son? Four. And how old is your daughter? Four and a half, actually. What? So close Same to yours. Same right. son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. five. How old yeah. is your daughter? She just turned 11. Wow. And they're actually listening. Hi, Baldwin. Hi, boy. Now, um, your your husband, what are some of the things that you sacrifice for your greatest love? Well, you know what? I was sort of um, long in the tooth when I got married. I wasn't, you know, a young girl. I mean, I did a lot of really, you know. Living. Yeah, exactly. All right. That's why I love what you tell people yes. every day when you tell the girl, you know, don't move in with that boy. You know, live by yourself so you can come home, take your bra off, eat ice cream out of the refrigerator. That's out right. the freezer. People, you know, it sounds silly, but it's really important to self-development. So I did all that. I lived by myself. You know, he makes fun. My, my husband makes fun of my last apartment in Manhattan, 101st and West End Avenue. You know, it's crack vials in the uh, vestibule. Right. Happy. So happy. You were there. You were by yourself. Living having a good by time. myself. Living that, you know, New York life on my own. Yeah. And, uh, and then I got married. But what, I had many, you know, many, many bad, you know, relationships. Boyfriends and stuff like that. you know. So by the time I met my husband, it was very, I was very clear-headed, you know? Yes. I had done a lot of self-examination yes. and all that stuff. So it was more like he was very familiar to me. It wasn't like, oh my God, you know, I, I can't say what, you know, well, I guess I can't say it on this show, but you know, it wasn't Anything like else. I was like this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was more like, oh yeah, like a warm, lovey, you know. You were ready. Mm -hmm. You were ready to commit. You were right, ready to give right. up some of the things. Because do you find, I always share with women, particularly girls in their 20s, who I'm trying to tell, don't commit so soon. You know, be careful. Use your yeah. birth control. Do you find that women give up more than men in no marriage? Question. Oh, Wendy. How many years have you been married? 13. Say, 
But, but you're happy to give those things up. But you can only be happy if, if you've, you've done. Lived. That's right. That's right. That's right. My mother would say, you know, when I went to Howard. Yes. And then I went to Northwestern. I, so I had friends all over. Yes. And if a friend called and said, you know, there's a party in Chicago. I'm in New Jersey. I'm there. Yes. You know, it was it was like that. So my mother would say, you know, when you settle down, uh-huh. you're going to be fine because you've lived. Yes. You know? So, yeah, so now, you know, I write full time. I'm home with my kids. I take them to school. I pick them up from school. Isn't that I wonderful. pack their lunch. I, well, you know, yeah, it yeah. is. It is. I mean, because I'm actually, you know, it's my fingerprint on them. That's right. You know? And you know what it's like. I yeah. mean, it's huge and it goes by so fast. Yes. Can you believe your little guy is no. He's that old? He's five. I can't believe it. I know. Because somebody else said, when I said that you were looking at schools, because everybody remembers right. when you had him. Right. You know, and my little guy, same thing. It's just, time goes by very fast. So, you know, but yeah. it's, all, it's all good. So that's not so how long have you been a full-time novelist? It's Benilde Little in here, everyone. Yeah, I've been, um, this is my fourth book. I've been doing this uh, for 10 years. And I was just saying, this is the last book on my contract with Simon & Schuster. And I am so glad to have that free headspace. Now, originally. I've had a book in my head for 10 years. You had a multi, you had a four-book deal with well, them. Well, the one was a freestanding, that, Good Hair. Okay. And that did really well. Okay. So they signed me to three. Okay, and now the good hair. When did that first come out? Because ninety six. Because I seem to remember that like it was yesterday. I know, because that was a really big book. Well, let's talk really... about it. Where do you get a title yeah. like good hair? What, what is that? I know. Well, you know what? It's not what you think. And a lot of people. I mean, a lot of people read it because they thought they were going to get some tips or something. You know? <laughs> but it was really about what we do as black people to each other. It's uh-huh. about class. Right. It's really about social class. Right. And um, so the two main characters are from two different class backgrounds. There's a working class girl from Newark, first person in her family to go to college. And the third generation, Harvard educated right. surgeon from Boston. Gotcha. From free blacks. Gotcha. Okay. Uh-huh. They get together and it's about, you know, they're into each other, but it's about their class baggage and what, what the families do and pulling, you know, pulling each other, pulling yeah. them from each other. So, you know, and that book, you know, did really well. I think it hit some 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 chords because re- remember back then, I mean, we weren't talking about that kind of stuff. Right. You know, I mean, we talk about it a little more openly now. A little. But, more a little, opening. but still it's still yeah. it's still sort of an uncomfortable subject. Yes. So, and but you know, again, having gone to Howard, it was really something that was close to me. Yes. I mean, I couldn't believe. I mean, I loved it. It was it was a great experience, but I also was really stunned by, you know, the snobbery and and, and the kind of stuff like, you know, Somebody asked me one of my first days there, not what my father had done for a living, that's bad enough, but what my grandfather had done. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, because it's about more than just the current generation right. in the house that you grew up right, in. Right, right, right. So that was, um, mm. you know, that was really kind of painful. And and, and, then, and then coming from a very different kind of uh, background where, you know, I'm being chased home and, you know, being called white girl and, you know, because my family had 50 cents more than the family next door. Right, know? right. So it was, you know. Did you grow up in D.C.? I grew up in Newark. Oh, okay. And, 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 and both of your parents, are they college-educated no. people? No, my, my parents are working class, you know, striving. I mean, right. my dad worked at um, General Motors right. for 32 years. So, the you know, very middle-class middle money, middle yes. income. Yes, yes. But, you know, working class and very much like we were going to college. Yes. Me and uh-huh. my brothers. My brother went to Northeastern. Uh-huh. Um, and, what year did uh, he graduate? Well, he's much older than you. He graduated in 76. Oh, so he knew like, Keith Motley and them. Yeah, it was it's a whole crew. Whenever I, and, and my brother was really popular. Yeah. He's fine. He's uh-huh. tall and all that. Oh. And um, really smart and a total lunatic. Just kidding, Dwayne. Um, Bye, Dwayne. Yeah, he, he... So, yeah, so every, everywhere I go in the country, if I say that, they go... They know me as ex's sister. That's uh, what they called him. Uh, yeah. uh. So, <laughs> but anyway, you know, so, yeah, we were all, like, we were all going to college and all that stuff. That's the kind of family I came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. But... But, you know, um, anyway, so... And you aspire the same for your kids to continue the... Um, all right, so let's get back to the book, because uh, right. Goose is holding up the two-minute sign. Right. <laughs> Everybody, her name is Benilde Little, and the book is called What Does She Think... Uh, excuse me, Who Does She Think She Is? This is the fourth book that she's put out, and remember, it's about the sacrifices of three women in the same family. Right, that's right. The grandmother, the mother, and the daughter... That's right. Uh, ...had to give up for love. Right, right, right. It's worth it, though. Yeah. Is it worth it? I think Only so. Only if you've lived. Only if you've lived. You have to live. You have to love yourself first. That's, and that's right. That's really what... And know yourself. And know yourself. That's really what I write about in every single book. Yeah. You know, that it, that is so key. I mean, the thing for me, when I was at Essence, when I was an editor, um, and I know you hear this all the time, too, on this show, is, you know, you get these letters from women, and they're all together. They, you know, they're pretty. Yeah. They're educated. Yeah. They've got their own thing. And they can't find a man. So you say, well, okay, well, what's wrong with you? Right. Because there's something wrong. And I don't mean, like, something that can't be fixed, but I mean... You need to get some help. You need to get yourself into therapy. You need to get some books. You need to get Ayanna Van Zandt. You need to get something. Right. You know, and figure it out. And figure out what you really want, not what Madison Avenue says you yes. want. You know? And that's the problem with so many of us. You know, it's not that, you know, yeah, there may be a shortage, but it's not that bad. That's right. You know, you can find somebody. Exactly. 
I mean, you don't want just anybody, but no, you can find somebody suitable right. for you. That's absolutely right. Well, pick up the book, everybody. It sounds like therapy in with a good read. Right, exactly. That's what it is. It's a fun read, but it's a lot of stuff in there. It's who does she think she is? It's Vanilzy Little. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Oh, I would thank you so much for having me. Wendy Williams Broadcast Day has completed. Oh, man. And WBLS Music starts next. Hey, this is Vaughn Harper. Spend your weeknights with me from 7 to midnight on The Quiet Storm. The only place you get that musical massage you need after a long, hard day. There's a quiet storm and it never felt like this before. I'm going down. I'm going down. Let's be closer. I'm here for you from 7 to midnight. On the Quiet Storm, 107.5 WBLS. Today's R&B and classic soul. Honey, can you come here, please? I can't. I gotta keep both hands on the wheel. What are you doing? Fighting the G-forces in turn three. Why'd I let you talk me into the DLP high-def TV? Hold on tight, baby. We are going three wide down the straightaway. So what are your plans for after the race? Haven't got a clue. Hey, did you see me blow right by that car? When you have an HD TV with DLP picture technology from Texas Instruments, the clarity is so razor sharp, so lifelike. You're not just watching, you're there. You know what, honey? I gotta make a pit stop. Excuse me? Oh, honey, I am starving. I keep passing the fridge, but I can't stop. Be sure your next HD TV has DLP picture technology from Texas Instruments. It doesn't get any more real than this. For a limited time, buy a Samsung 61-inch or larger DLP HDTV or any Samsung 1080p DLP HDTV and get a free high-def, up-converting DVD player and a DVD box set of The Who performing live. Visit Samsung.com for more information. Want more ways to connect with your family? Then head to Verizon Wireless. Buy the all-new Samsung A850 camera phone, originally $99.99, for just $49.99 after mail-in rebate and get a Samsung A630 color flip free after $30 mail-in rebate with new two-year agreement.